Montclair was on last week. They 7 3 uh, Purdue in order to take okay, the series. Okay. That was the final map. And so it's no surprise right now that we are going to be seeing the Azami band out as well. So the band on the Dokabi is interesting, and the Fen Rear is expected as well. All these bands are pretty good. Maverick's pretty good from St. Clair because he's so useful in getting that con and CC wall, especially the fact that there are so many useful hatches that Maverick can also grab on that basement defense if it does come down to it. And on the side of Drexel, they choose to ban out the Fenrir and the Dokabi. The Dokabi is used for heavy roam clear, so it makes very, uh, it makes a lot of sense to see them running the Solus and the Legion, two big roaming operators that they want St. Clair to have a hard time of clearing out. Yeah, okay, so as we can see here, that both teams are starting to prep their, prep their defenses and or offenses with the drones being, uh, ready to be unleashed and doing some recon. Uh, lots of... Yeah, those are cameras being set up here. Um, oh, drone taken out already. Right, wow. and that is Solus's job. She can scan all those electronics, kind of like an IQ on attack. She can get those setups down. And it's no surprise that with the Maverick band coming out, Drexel will opt to go for a church arsenal defense first. So that makes sense to me, at least. Now it's going to be Salty Boy on the Jackal. And let's get into some lineups as well. We got Corey Rob on the Grim, Rabbit on that Buck, as I predicted, that entry player. And then we're going to have Jocks on the Hibana and Charm on soft support on the Thatcher as well with the Diffuser in hand. On the other side of Drexel, we have uh, Sir is the Butterlock? I can't remember, but I, I, at least I don't think I see that. But anyway, he's yeah. on the Legion. And then we have Italian Mafia on the Wamai, OSD on the Valk. Ducks on the Solus. He's going to be the player to look out for on this Drexel team. I believe he is the best player on the lineup. And then we have World of Karma also on the Mute. So, getting into this right now, St. Clair, something they need to work on as they do make their entry into gym is they they have been dying with a lot of drones in pocket. That was something that when me and my friends were going over the VOD last week, is the first engagement comes out, and that is rapid onto OSD. That is 1-0 on entry. St. Clair finds the first pick on the board. What I was going to get back to is that St. Clair, they have a hard time of finding use out of their utility. Ducks is on one shot, though, so this is going to be good drone work here. St. Clair knows that they have him trapped in strip. It's going to be interesting to see how they clear them but that's Ooh. not a good engagement you can't be taking one-on-ones and something i was going to bring up is there are two things st Clair is particularly struggling in as cory rob gets the next pick onto ducks and gets the trade they are bad at getting uh intel uh, from their drones. A lot of time you will see some of the Saints players as of last week when they were dying They had a lot of drones on pocket. That's oh, not okay. something you want to see You want to make sure that you're using all of your drones to gather as much intel as you possibly can before you engage The other thing that they're not particularly uh, good at in that first map in Oregon was finding their refrags finding their trade backs Especially on operators like Solus. So finding that pick onto ducks is huge and now with the pick on the Valkyrie Ooh. as well, and Pretty as they start to there. as they start to make their way into dig, we're going to see as this pushes down to the last minute, what can St. Clair do? Yeah, we're looking. It's really, I mean, really slow here, right? And nobody wants to make a mistake um, in this situation. Everybody's kind of staring down at angles where enemies could possibly be here. We're seeing an entry. Just getting made into that wall, shooting right through that corridor, making sure that they can clear out the area. And now as the push comes through, Karma finding two on the shotgun. Corey Rob trading back, and right now with a player injured, they just need to take the one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be Italian Mafia with the first pick. The swing on the blue is going to find the injured player, and now the 1v1 around Boiler. What can happen right now? It seems like Italian Mafia trying to just back off onto blue stairs. This is really smart. He knows that he can just use the rotation onto the moto hatch opened up as the default cam goes down. And the SSC player needs to get the plant down. Corey Rob, you have to find a plant on Blue, but he's trying to look for the kill. That's a horrible plant spot as Blue is just going to be swung up by Italian Mafia. Ooh. And he is going to find the pick. Mafia with a really good job of trying to fake that re-engagement onto a Blue or Moto Hatch. He instead just doubles back, walks back down Blue Stairs, and he finds the first round for Drexel. 
yeah, definitely very good execution there. Um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't understand half the stuff that was going on. It was going too fast. All of a sudden, everybody's moving and everything's going on and everyone's dying. But yeah, really, really quick execution there. Um, so in that first phase, of course, oh, hold on here. Mute, I am familiar with that character. Yes, uh, so Mute places down jammers that can lock okay, off drone or block off drones from getting yeah. intel. Uh, but as you were saying, Gabriel, yeah, yeah. were you going on? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was talking about... Uh, just the speed at which it's kind of like Valorant, where like stuff just explodes. Yes. Um, but yeah, we're it's it's also it's more tactical than Valorant in the sense that you Very actually much have so. a phase where you prep more than just you know setting up some stuff. Right. So the difference of siege is that utility matters a lot, and yeah. it's something that I want to point out as well uh, that I did point out last week, but in case you weren't here, a lot of players uh, really underrate Italian Mafia right now on the Frost, and the reason why Frost is still somewhat of an okay operator to run is that when she puts those bear mats under windows and beside doors and everything it may not grab the kill because champ players and players on this caliber of play usually just know to shoot down and uh, when they hop through a barricade and shoot the frost mat the easy way to engage though as the defender on this is when you have that frost mat underneath the attackers feet as they're going in they have it forces it them to look down to shoot that so them placing their crosser on the frost mat allows you to have that split second opportunity to swing on and get what is essentially a free kill. So it's okay. going to be interesting to see how St. Clair deals with that rapid with the hard breaching charge onto CC wall. He's going to open up that hole and now with the hole into servers is going to see on this gym and bedroom defense. I would assume that the con wall, which is just exactly what Rapid just took in the logistics hatch, which is what the fuck is going to open, is oh, going to be their main push, as well as the jacuzzi wall on the side of that thermite getting opened up. It's probably going to be the Oso with him as well, with that thermite, and that's some early damage, early engagement, and the Osa is going to go down. Really good pickup from the Frost. Now, you don't necessarily want to get thirsty on this pick. It is in a revivable position, and the Frost just wants to make sure that he doesn't take the re-engagement without another St. Clair player trading him back. That's a smart move from the Frost. And now, as Drexel will figure out, when this revive does go down, they can expect that Corey Rob will only be left on 20 health as a swing from Cash comes in. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Mute just not getting the shots there to get the pickup. And now Mute is most likely on one or just barely above one shot. Pings yeah, go out and Rapid knows idea. exactly how he has to play this. He just has to be patient. If you are the mute, you do not want to overextend and swing out here. But these holes from Rapid are just sound cues trying to get the mute to swing out. We'll see if they can get up the pick. And it seems like right now the push, the frag grenade trying to clear out that shield on top of the cache door. And it's going to do just that. That shield is gone now. And with that angle opened up, does Charm know about the mute player playing right beside the door? He sees the feet. Can he find the Ooh. shot? Yes, he can. Doesn't have to not necessarily go for the kill right now. He's not in a revival position. Rapid's going to pick that up. Engagement onto the bedroom window. Ooh. And that is something that the castle should not be peeking. He can just stay patient there right now. Seems like Drexel getting a little too over aggressive on this defense. They're peeking stuff they don't have to peek. And St. Clair is taking full advantage of it. The pick is going to come out from Jocks, retried it back from Italian Mafia as well. But as this round comes to an end, and with barely any plant denial other than the Solus, it seems like if, if St. Clair can just bait out these two impact nades and maybe get a plant on top of bed, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they go here. It would be smart to go next to the logistics wall because that is a brick floor and it is not wall bangable. Solus is going to find one from below onto Rapid, but the Thermite gets the plant down. It's going to be a pick from Salty Boy onto Italian Mafia, and they know where this Solus is coming from. Impact Nade going out to just start an engagement and sound queue up the stairs, but Charm is holding that angle. Cross angle now being held as well. This is almost certain death. They just have to play patient. No need to peek. Oh. That is a beautiful shot by Ducks, however onto the, th I believe what was the, yeah, the Zofia, and now the cross angle being held, just sound baiting, going to get the swing, he knows that Charm is now sitting inside of logistics, he can take the engagement, he's going to find the kill, and on one shot now he has to try to defuse, he has a second to try to bait it out, but now he has no time, he needs to try to stick it, and Jox is going to be able to find the pickup, really good try from Ducks there, working through logistics, finding the bait and swing as well with the sound cues, but all that Jox has to do is play patient, he finds the pickup, he sends St. Clair up to tie the game one apiece. Wow, that was an extreme, I mean, that was a really good performance. Just the way that they went about it, I mean, the peak, re-peak, Unpeak, re-peak, peak, peak, unpeak, peak, peak, un I, I, mean, I don't even know how many times he peaked that angle. It was like 
defenders what, like at least 10 times? So because Ducks didn't really have any idea of where any of these Saints players are, I mean, he assumes the hold's probably going to be a cross hold from bathroom and logistics. He just wants to make sure that he can find intel without giving his life away. So how does he do that? He sprints to create that sound calm. A St. Clair player pre-fires. He sees the tracers go by, and he knows that there's now one inside of logistics because of the tracers, and he doesn't have any sign of anyone anywhere else. At that point, it's a desperation thing. You just have to take an engagement onto the def onto the attacker because you have time. to defuse, right? Because of right. time. He finds the pick, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have enough time. Even if he wanted to get off that defuser and kill the last remaining Saints player, he wouldn't have had enough time to get back onto the defuser and defuse it. It takes I seven see. seconds to counter uh, defuse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a lot of time. I mean, seven seconds, okay. One second is enough to get you killed, so seven seconds is like... You can die it, seven times. It is quite the endeavor. Now, hold on. I want to focus on, I believe that's the Solus hanging out in Strip. Very close to Salty Boy right now. And if the repel noise is heard, I believe Ducks just can't quite hear that repel noise. And Salty Boy is going to get out undamaged. That is going to be a huge uh, moment in this round. Especially just because St. Clair wasn't aware of the Solus in Strip. And the Solus wasn't aware of Salty Boy on the repel. Yeah, no, definitely kind of one of those uh, both parties going right by each other and not really noticing each other moments. Um, oh, what's it called? I don't remember. Anyways, um, but yeah, an interesting one here. So the defenses are already set up. Here we're seeing the breaches start to, well, getting made, I guess. Yeah, so they're starting. Their main as the close to Rhino comes out. I believe that was still the Stolas and Strip. Logistics Hatch is open and they are going to try a con push Push on a construction now. And as the engagement comes out, it's going to be on this mute to hold it from the bomb chassis behind a bomb as well. They're probably going to look to get that con wall open, I believe. And yep, there's the hard breaching charge. However, the mute is aware of it, and he heard it. The mute jammer going to go down, and the impact trick from above should get rid of this. But I don't believe it was successful. The impact trick, I believe, missed from the sound cues. And right now, it's looking like a very good take from St. Clair. Capitao putting on the firebolt, trying to clear out that behind bomb, behind the bomb chassis, and Rapid's going to pick up the first refrag by DOSD as well on that Alda. And it seems like Rapid's just going to keep continuing his madness and rampage. He has the second pick as well. They need to try to find a way in. Good job from Rapid to drone out now. He can provide that utility, and as the ping comes out, they are aware of a flank. However, the Solus is going to double back and head up Red Stairs or Garage. Now, you need to be aware if you're the Capitao. Really good wall bang there. I believe that was just a stray shot, but he's going to find the injure as well. And as the Legion gets the pick onto Rapid, it is now a 2v3 with one DBNO. The impact needs coming out, trying to see if they can find that damage on the Capital, but now the Legion has to be careful with that impact. They are aware that he is on red stairs now. And if the Saints can just hold their cross angles and get this plant down, that is going to be everything. The Solus doesn't have any impact nades. However, Legion throwing the impact nade. He knows what the plant going down, but yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. The Solus is on red stairs. No idea that the plant is going down, and now that is going to be a successful plant. St. Clair with that diffuser down. 40 seconds, they just have to hold cross angles. And as the bleed out phase is getting short for the Jaeger, you would expect him to die in garage. 3v1 right now. And if you're Sir Butterlock, you need to try to take your engagements. He is going to find absolutely nothing for his efforts on red. Really good job of holding the cross angles down from St. Clair. Had the cross in garage, had the cross on bomb chassis, had the cross on breach, had the cross on red. They had everything locked up. St. Clair go up 2-1 on this clubhouse match. A good execution by St. Clair. They had their angles, they had like, I mean, they were playing this like it was practice. Well, I mean, it was practice. Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't practice, then that is one hell of a solo queue game, but luckily this isn't solo queue. Uh, but yeah, lots of practice and we can see it showing here. Uh, they're used to this, they know how to play these maps, they know how to communicate with each other and get that intel. We're seeing the drones come out a lot more. You were talking about how they were struggling with it at the start of the season. Well, now they're starting to get used to them a little bit more they're starting to make use of them they're starting to gather that intel winning that war against information right so now we're as we're seeing here just gathering that intel really trying to find that bomb trying to find that util seeing how they can get in Ooh, role playing as a book okay i can see that <laughs> it's not going to last for long the solace oh, nope. has that ability she can scan out there and that's the only problem right if you burn too many drones in the prep phase everybody kind of has an idea of where the utility and the bomb is going to be they can hear the sound cues, right? So it's just about not wasting drones in prep phase, especially with the Solus on the board. It is dangerous. You want to try to keep at least five drones alive.
five for the action phase. I would honestly argue even six or seven because you really want to just have that Solus caught off guard, being too busy with doing other stuff that you can then slip those drones through and get the intel. It's going to be hard though with the mute on the board. And now as St. Clair tries to take what I believe after they open up this long hallway, they're probably going to try to get an eye on that Solus, who I'm assuming is holding up top, and that exactly she is. Probably trying to get a uh, pick from, or no, sorry, not a pick. Probably trying to get a pick up top, yes, but her main role right now, and what you're going to have to watch, is when that kitchen hatch tries to get taken, that Solus is going to rotate into logistics, and she is going to try to find the wall bang onto any of those gadgets, right? Any of those hard breaching charges, those ex Kairos pellets that Habana brings, and there it is, the pick from up top. Rapid, unlucky with that one on entry. The soul is doing a really good job evading the drone, but however, the trade almost comes through, and there it is from Charm. They are doing a lot, a way better job of last week of getting those retrades and refrags, and now, as it's a 4v4 in the rest of the round, it's going to be interesting to see how without that buck and without that vertical play available to them on such a site that demands vertical presence, it's going to be interesting to see how St. Clair takes this. Yeah, those hatches definitely being a little bit of a predicament. Hard to get through without getting banged. Um, but they managed to get through that hatch undisturbed. Hopefully they're going to be able to get to those sites a little bit faster now. Um, getting that intel, trying to get some good positions here. Um, but that push isn't easy to do. So they're going to have to watch out, see how they can play this one out strategically. We can see here lots of angles being held that are hard for St. Clair to push. So we're going to be seeing where that goes. And right now, St. Clair trying to send one in to dig, and that is going to be the Grim doing that job. He's just trying to find a little bit of a dig presence. It could be a little bit of a feint. We have no clue yet. But as the drone goes through and spots the Goo Mine, it is going to spot the Wamai, and that should be the end of that. Goo Mine destroyed, but the Wamai is aware of the dig presence. But just as I thought, it's going to be a double back with 40 seconds left. However, you might not have a choice. You might have to really just kind of get this engagement onto the kitchen hatch. We'll see what they want to do. St. Clair have played this attack extremely slowly. And if I'm Drexel right now, I'm sitting comfy. I believe they've taken too long. Gumon going out. They know that the Grim is on those main stairs. And now all they have to do is sit and wait. And with 20 seconds left, I would almost guarantee this round goes to Drexel. The push from Blue hasn't even happened yet. Hatches are just getting open. Attackers are running into Gumines. It's all hell for St. Clair. Injure onto the Hibana as well. Koi Rob finding a pick though. Aggression coming up from Blue. There's no way Salty Boy takes this. The reload has to come through. But what are you doing, Drexel? How do you? This opportunity, the attack on St. Clair comes through. An absolutely brilliant ball rush on the site. They find all the picks they need, and the Wamai swinging carelessly at a dig is going to be found out. They, I mean, they, 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 nothing happened. Everything happened within the span of five seconds. Again. <laughs> I mean, this game is so explosive and so passive at times, it is insane. But you could see it, man. Those goo mines were everywhere. And you could just, I mean, they were walking and, I, oh yeah, guess I what? Really you got something in the new I don't know how St. Clair did that. It really has to fall on OSD on that mute. You have to hit that shot onto the Jackal. That is a complete whiff on his part. I wouldn't usually harp and go into players, but that is just an engagement you cannot afford to, you know, take away. And on the mute as well, you would expect maybe in a close engagement like that, just pull out the shotgun. Use the shotgun that mute has for those close range engagements, especially at a range like that. You have the guy on the reload. There's no possible way he can find that kill. But it's I mean, Rainbow Six Siege, and it's my favorite esport for a reason. Anything can happen, just especially even when it looks dire and everything looks grim. Attackers one Some, headshot is all it takes. One headshot is all it takes. Couldn't have said it any better myself, Gabriel. As St. Clair gets into this attack right now on three to one. They're doing a really good job right now of finding those entry picks. I know last round didn't go too well, but they got the trade back at least. So right now, if you're St. Clair, you just got to focus up. You just had a very... Very, very exciting round. Let's just clean it up, though. Get back to business. Rapid's going to look to do just that as he breaches into the CC wall. Probably going to look to take out logistics. And are they aware of the Solus roaming in strip? I believe the drones may have 
no, I don't believe the drones have seen her. So that will go uncontested. I believe that attacker is outside of garage, so I don't think the frost will get the pickup onto her. No, I don't believe so. And right now, St. Clair just playing it slow and patient. The jacuzzi wall going to be opened up from the thermite. And right now, just gathering intel. However, I do believe... Yep, there's a sound cue. No, wait. Oh, no. I think that's a visual bug. I believe the jacuzzi wall is indeed open. Just a visual bug uh, from Siege. First pick going to be found as Koi Rob is going to take it out. But Drexel goes back and just immediately finds two. Rapid finding another one as well. And if you're St. Clair right now, it appears that Cory Rob actually did hit a frost mat, so he is going to be limping for probably the rest of the round. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, the feet. Yeah, so uh, it's it's going to be an interesting take. Yeah, Jox in all chat saying weird glitch. I believe he's talking about the jacuzzi wall. I don't know if you can actually enter that. I believe the wall has actually stayed firm. Yeah, it has. That's a really weird bug. That wall should be opened. St. Clair, you just got to deal with it, though. Um, really unusual <laughs> as they get the intel going with a minute left. That is the one of the weirdest bugs I've ever seen. That wall should be open. St. Clair should have an avenue to push through there. But now I guess they just don't? Unless the Osa really wants to try. Unless the Osa can can get in and maybe it's just a, a phantom wall i have no clue anyway as i say this rapid is going to find the drone and yeah i believe as Corey is just tested you cannot get through oh that God. wall so it's not going to be an avenue of entry the peek on the bathroom salty not going to find anything and there's the soulless that's what happens when you let her stay into the late rounds she can just have live tracking on that diffuser and as this engagement comes into logistics the soulless is in a beautiful spot and she should pick up this next kill and she does really good job by ducks there just playing patient giving up ground letting the attacker swing in, and with Cory Rob on one shot and 16 seconds left, this is sure but all over for St. Clair on this attacking round. Drexel doing a really good job of just keeping up on defense, standing strong. They will take this gym bedroom round as these five seconds come in, shooting the frost mat, but it will not matter in the end. The Drexel defender in the castle swinging out onto couch, and it's just going to be an easy pickup and a beautiful round from Drexel University. We saw right there what you were talking about, about the, the, the mats, that half second that you had where they were looking down to shoot, and that opportunity or that window that it makes for them to get that shot. And yeah, we, we saw the execution right there. As he shoots the mat, gets shot. Right, That's and the players in all chat, they're complaining about that jacuzzi wall. And they, and rightly they should. It, that is, that is just, oh, it's so tragic because there are just some things you can't control. Siege does have a couple of weird glitches, but I've, I've, I've only seen that like happen once before. So, really weird. But anyway, three two so far. You have to move on. Saint Clair hoping that they can try to find this fourth round in the half when until the sides flip. And if you're Saint Clair right now, I will say I'm very thoroughly impressed, especially on Clubhouse, which is a defense sided map as well so St. Clair finding three rounds on attack to at least make it a 3-3 split is positive the worst they can do is have that 3-3 tie and who knows they might be able to get a fourth round for their liking. Gumon's being sent down from the Legion and as this prep phase comes to an end you have to think it's all going to be on Ducks. Seven and four so far. He is ripping these Saints apart. They're not doing a very good job of letting, uh, of trapping him down. They're kind of letting him roam a little bit free. One round they were able to take care of him, but on the rounds that Drexel has won, it's all been because of the soulless in the end. And even on one of the rounds that they did win, it came to a very close 1v2 that that soulless almost pulled off. Yeah, do you think this is going to go to a game three? So, looking at the lineups and looking at the teams, I will say that these two teams are pretty evenly matched. Uh, I would expect this to go to a game three. However, if I'm wrong, I'd want the Saints to obviously take it 2-0. But I got the Saints going 2-1 uh, on this series. Again, just depends on the maps. And there you go. You don't get the intel on the Ducks. He makes you pay. That's another huge pick as well, as it is on the Thatcher. So, you have to imagine all these Mute Jammers, all these Wamai Discs, Valk Cams, they will all stand and go go there is nothing that they can do to deactivate those gadgets now unless they shoot them and uh, that's going to be easier said than done because that's going to be a very late round development now the jackal has pings on the solas but can he find the pick no drop coming down from the con hatch and it's going to be rapid on the entry as well picking up the kill onto the valkyrie 
He is aware of a roamer close by, and I believe I do see the tracers in garage, and the jackal ping is going to come out. The two know exactly what's going on. The Solus drops in a boiler, and now she has to try to get back to sight. It's not worth dying over. The Solus does not want to overstay her welcome, and as the Saints take blue hatch with a minute, 20 remaining, the Moto Hatch will get taken as well. Habana sending a pre-fire through, but not going to find anyone. And now Salty Boy just with that drone, trying to find a little more intel before he engages on this blue push on one shot, I might add. So not a very good odds take by that Jackal, especially with a Solus who now knows that they have the drones and the droning presence into blue. Coming it to the teammates, they're probably aware of this and the running and the sprinting. It should be heard by the guy in Moto Hatch, but he's going to be taken out by Corey Rob. That's a beautiful pick and one that the Saints absolutely needed is that as they start working on the kitchen hatch. Impact trick coming out and it should be taken out by the Wamai. It's going to be exactly just that. And as the Wamai preps these little angles, going prone, throwing that Wamai disc, just trying to get rid of any projectiles that come through the way. It's going to be the engagement coming through main hall. I really don't like this if you're from the Saints. You only have 30 seconds left and you still have the Solus and the Valk who is on the cams right now. The Valk isn't alive, but that intel that she can give her team is crucial in these last 30 seconds. With three players left on the board, it's looking pretty dire. I think the Saints kind of have to go for a Moto and main drop. That's going to be exactly it. This Grim will die right now from the hatch drop, and there will be another one killed as well. Salty Boy into the hatch. He should find the first pick, and he's going to do just that. 2v2. It's down to the last eight seconds, but Salty Boy is going to get hit by the Legion. And now with the Hibana under stress, he's going to find the first pick. All you have to do, Solus, is not peek, but it's going to come down to a final gunfight, but not enough time on the board to claim the kill. If I was a Solus, I would have just opted to run away, maybe tuck behind Boiler. But the Solus was just trying to play behind the wall, play time. She will be successful, but if that came down to just half a second more, we might be looking at a St. Clair win again in a dire round in basement. I mean, half a second, even a quarter or a fifth of a second would have one been shot. enough there. Yeah. One shot. It's one shot's all it takes, and as long as it hits the head, is that? Is that those are cats right next to Jaeger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that's a yeah, that's a sandbox gaming uh, background on the uh, calling card. Anyway, so in this 3-3 half now, Drexel has gotten their three rounds they need on this defense. However, it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with this St. Clair defense. Something to keep in mind as well, the player that you're going to want to watch is the Mira from Salty Boy. A very, very uh, good operator for holds specifically. However, she has gotten recent nerfs. In fact, Ooh, okay. now, not only is the Bulletproof Glass punchable, but even operators like Ash and Callie can get in the way of that Bulletproof Glass sending their utility through it so the mirror left. is in a little bit of a weird situation here but as the hold should go down you usually see them placing mirrors on logistics and that's going to be exactly what happens if i had to guess where the second mirror is it's probably on bathroom you can punch through bulletproof glass no not through not through you can just crack it so when you punch it you crack it so the whole point is that mirror can't say see through that one-sided uh glass oh okay because i was gonna say last time i checked bullets carry more kinetic <laughs> energy than yeah. Yes. Punches. No, you can't just shoot the mirror out, but what you can do is you can walk up and punch it, and it will crack the glass enough to the point where the mirror cannot see anything through it anymore. Okay. So, it's going to be interesting to see, though, how St. Clair deals with this jocks on a cash hold. He is going to probably be... Nope. I was going to say he was going to be the first point of uh, engagement. It's probably actually going to be the castle who's tucked himself in garage. Huh. Interesting decision. What would be the tactical advantage towards doing that the So, Rapid is probably using his castles, a couple of his castles, off-site right now, just to force uh, pressure exactly on like that. So you have that castle on cash. It's going to have to make the ace waste of breach charge. And the Jaeger might see the feet as the breaching charge get placed. Nope, not able to find his shot there. He's going to opt to just back out and go into Khan. He still has those two hard walls, though, onto Cash and Red that he can use to play around. And he also has that hatch that I believe he can drop down. Rapid playing below. He knows that there's a player now crossing his sight line somewhere around bar. It's going to be interesting. And as the drone comes out, they know exactly where Jox is now. The swing 
could come out. However, if I were if I were Drexel, I wouldn't be swinging that. And that is also huge. That's some, oh my god! No, Rapid to your left. There's a guy just on the drone. There's a guy on drone, and you don't see him. He walked right by Ace. He should be able to repeak. There it is. I believe the call was made from Jox. Oh, no. And I was going to comment. <laughs> if that didn't happen, I was immediately going to comment on the impact of the bandit trick that we just saw there, taking out one of those thermite charges on Jacuzzi Wall, and now with the thermite with only one charge left, it's going to be interesting to see how they take this. However, the bandit has been killed, so no more. No more bandit truck can be used. And with the Thatcher and the Thermite still alive, this Jacuzzi Ball should be taken. And there it is. A couple of picks going down. The bug is no longer there for Drexel at least. So they will have entry into this Jacuzzi Wall. However, they still have to get through Amira with Charm holding very patiently. With 30 seconds left, you have to imagine this is going to be a difficult take, but hold on. They have the gym window open. They might just be able to hop in here if they can just have crosses onto the guy on construction. It's going to be Jocks, and he has the most important role here. As the fire goes out, he has to vacate that position, and that should allow the players into gym. It's going to be just that. The firebolt as well, drilling out the mirror, and I believe that, no! Oh my god, they prepped the castle! That's absolutely brilliant! The diffuser goes down, and the kill is going to be found out! That is an amazing prep of the castle barricade by St. Clair! Need to protect it. And right now, they just have to peek patiently. They have to try to find the kill. The attacker playing so good in and out of the angles. Finding the first, missing on the second, and now he just has to wait. Jox has to swing this angle on the crouch peak, and he's going to find it. A beautiful round by St. Clair, as they have that amazing prepped castle with just one punch. The attackers thought it was so, so free. You wouldn't think that the defenders were gonna be able to get through that castle barricade, but they prepped it. It takes nine hits to get through a castle barricade, so the defenders hit it seven times just in case they needed to quickly access Jim. That's an amazing big brain play there. The okay. Frost just needs to vault over that bathroom wall, hit that castle twice, and find the kill. Sadly not onto the planter as it was just a little too late. The fuser does go down. Nevertheless though, the Saints do capitalize on their 3v1. They take that round and now it is 4-3 to three on what should be a strong Saints hold onto Church and Arsenal. Last week they did very good on this site especially with an annoying Purdue offense that brought a Blitz and a Montang, which is two shield operators. Oh, no. So not something that you usually see. St. Clair with what I should assume is going to be a strong hold. Yeah, definitely. Uh, St. Clair's trying to play some 5D chess right now. <laughs> yeah, no, that was an absolutely amazing play on the prepped castle barricade on Jim. I did not expect that to come out. That was honestly that that was very that was very cool to watch. Yeah, uh, one of the things that you that's were a beautiful drone. shield operators, Attackers right? Like shield operators are the ones with the whole body. Do shield, they still right? have him? They do. So they know that Rapid is right here. Rapid has no clue that they have eyes on him right now. And as the yellow pings go out. The drone, I believe, did get taken out there. So maybe Rapid has a little bit of an inkling that the drone is there, and yes, he's going to pull back the second that garage wall gets thrown open. It was Corey Rob on the camera who did spot the drone, so that's how Rapid knew from the default cam that the drone was watching him. He's going to just rotate up red right now, and it is all going to be on Jocks and Rapid to be a thorn in the side of this Drexel attack. They know the soul is upstairs now, most likely playing from logistics, trying to get any any uh, Salma charges or or ex Kairos pellets that could go on that kitchen hatch. But now that they're aware that two St. Clair Saints are on this top floor, before Drexel does anything, they must clear out these two roamers. Deploying drone. Yeah, those roamers are definitely going to be a thorn in the side. And uh, what would you say is the best, like, because, like, the, there has to be a strategy behind this one, right? Like, when you need to deal with roamers, what's the best way? Because, like, if they're roaming around, they're in uncharted territory, right? They don't have as much intel. Well, Ooh, you have to swing with multiple people, but you have to have good drone work as well. And as the drone approaches the back of Rapid, this should spell the end for him as they cross, as they cover, I believe that was like four different cross angles onto him. Wow. And now as the Ying comes through, this is also a key part of the roam clear. The Solus wants nothing of it and she's going to rotate back downstairs as she should. That Ying having four candelas that she can throw out. They're basically like cluster flashbangs and they're extremely toxic. She has four of them. Ying is probably one of Hold the on. best, if not the best attacker in the game right now. 81 round LMG with no recoil, and it has a fast reload time. 
It's oh, wow. just there's she has a lot of strengths with not a lot of weaknesses. You were so saying that a soul, she get bang, out of there. right? Like a flashbang is toxic as hell. And in any game you play, all right? The flashbangs, if you used flashbangs, are toxic, all right? She has four cluster but she ones. Has four cluster ones. Yep. Oh, and she can also choose when to go off based on how long she cooks them for. So they can be on impact. She can well, roll it into a room and then have it go off. She can time it so that if it bounces off a wall and then hits the floor, it'll go off. So Ying oh, is a yeah. very okay. versatile operator that a lot of people ban on maps like Bank and Cafe, maps that are usually more aggressive. So right now, though, as the push comes through main, Salty Boy has a lot of work to do as those next Kairos pellets should clear out his Mira onto Church. They'll do exactly just that. Salty Boy is actually going to opt to just kind of sit in this position, though, and as the smokes come out, you have to assume this Ying has to take some sort of advantage on the blue. The motor drop should come out soon. Charm standing strong is going to find the first pick, but OSD is going to answer back, and Serpentalock is going to find the next one, and now they have complete church control. You should see the default plant coming out here, and that is going to be exactly what happens. Those, clunder, those cluster flashbangs coming through on those candelas. You just see the effect of it. It clears out the entire area. All Karma has to do is play patient, and that is going to be a beautiful attack by the side of Drexel. Yeah, those flashbangs are just... I mean, look, getting rid of somebody's vision in pretty much any game, like, it's it's just not nice, man. Like, why you gotta do me like that, all right? I'm trying to do something, and your entire, like, gimmick is, Here, how about no? Here's something I want to talk about, though. Okay. Defense there is an operator on defense to counter this. And I'm not surprised that with a Capitao who can launch smoke bolts as well, that this is coming out. Cory Rob is going to select Warden. Now what Warden does is he has these glasses he can activate. And when he activates them, he not only can't get flashed, he also can see through smoke when he stands still. So it's going to be the Warden pick coming out from Cory Rob, and I'm not surprised to see this at all, especially if St. Clair knows that they run a Capitao Ying combo. It's going to be something that you can try to do in order to stay alive late round. Now, that being said, the two key players that need to stay alive are the Warden and the Solus. If Warden can stay alive, he can usually make a lot of late game utilities such as flashes and smokes unusable or useless, and the Solus needs to stay alive because she can try to find as many kills on drones as she can and also deny plan. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two work in tandem to try to stop any aggressive plants from going down. In a basement defense again, St. Clair wants to try to hold yet again on that Mira. First engagement coming out, but it's not going to find anyone. I believe Jox took just a slight bit of damage that he did, but tis nothing but a flesh wound as he escapes scot-free. Yeah, well, okay, maybe it's a little bit of a wound, but wait, hold on, that's like, that, that's, is that an armor bar or is that a health bar? I'm not sure. So, based on the amount of health attack or defenders have, based on how chunky they are, you can either be three, uh, I believe it's, yeah, three armor or three speed, for example. So, that's kind of the modifier. So, usually you'll see operators that are either three armor and one speed, two armor, two speed, or three speed, one armor. So that just oh, depends on how much health they have. Rapid going for the run out, pretty ill-advised, and he's going to pay for it. Ying's going to find the entry onto him. Not a very good uh, life to give up either, because Legion, the longer he stays alive, the more goo mines he can regenerate and use. So a very early pick going down, and it's not one that you want to see taken off the board. So if you're St. Clair right now, you have to be patient. I would kind of just assume they're going to turtle up. That's going to be exactly what they're trying to do. The Solus will most likely try to impact trick on that kitchen hatch. However, as Drexel tries to get into dig, it is going to be a multi-sided push. And if you're St. Clair right now, you just have to try to get as much intel as you can and play calm, play safe, don't overpeak, try not to do anything too stupid. You might be able to just win off of time and risk of engagement. This is going to be a huge part of the round. Can that mirror be sealed off? The smoke from last time is what they used. We'll see if that's going to be taken. The Capitao might be throwing into smoke, but the Warden's going to find the pick onto the Hibana. Capitao was not there like last round to guide that Hibana into sight. And now they're going to pay for it. The Hibana out. Kitchen Hatch should stand strong unless it's been taken by one of the hard breaching charges. I believe it actually has. And as Ace is literally right up to the barricade on Dick, he's probably looking for a kill onto the person in blue right on the Mira. The Mira is going to crouch up, and the Ace should have a gunfight that he can engage on. 
Adira setting up those head holds, probably just enough to arc a C4 over or just for peaks. However, the cross is being held by the Wamai. Shots coming out from the mirror. Are they aware of how close this ace is on the dig door? I don't believe they are. However, the sound of the shuffling might come out, and that just indeed is what happened. The mirror knows to look backwards now, and this is going to get messy. That's the dig pick coming out, and if you're St. Clair, that is a perfect, perfect take with five seconds left. You have to assume as the Incandels come out, there's not much you can do. The Warden's going to counter it out, as I thought, and as the 2v2 comes down, there's not enough time to get the plant down. The Warden, as a beautiful counter to that Ying, even finding the kill themselves. The Thatcher not able to get the plant down in church. Time ran out. Beautiful defense on the side of St. Clair. Good execution. Lots of peaks were being held. That, um, that barricade, though, like, you were saying they didn't know how close he was. What gave him away? Was it like the noise of him moving around? So sound is everything in Siege, so exactly. When that ace uncrouches and shuffles around trying to switch peak, that immediately, because the Wamai was so close to that barricade and because okay, it had already been hit, they knew right immediately, back. okay, this guy is close up to the barricade. The mirror engaged. They had cross angles as well if he was ever going to get in. So it just didn't work out right there for the ace. Uh, especially just because I don't like dig take as well. I don't like taking uh, attacks from dig. It never really works. It's just, it's simple. It's a one way, right? So if it doesn't work, you're just stuck. So it's not the most ideal way to push basement, but in a multi-sided push, usually you do want to have an attacker in dig that can just kind of alleviate some of that pressure from the front. That's what Drexel tried to do. It just didn't work out for them. Okay, I see. So just an attempt was made and it just didn't work. It's pretty much what you can amount to do. Attackers are heading out to the fuse. Oh, bird traps here coming in. Attackers have dropped the bomb diffuser. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. But hopefully it's going to actually find its use. As we can see here, climbing up onto the roof. Are they going for a top down? Angle, maybe? So what they're going to do is they're most likely going to just take logistics control by getting that hatch. And then, there we go. I see Cory Rob already doing it. He's prepping that castle yet again, just in case they need quick access into gym. I saw him hitting it there quickly when we switched onto the Mira. So it's going to be interesting to see if that comes back to bite Drexel again. But it's or if be, Drexel takes advantage of it. Or if Drexel does take advantage of it. Usually you would want to have it closed though, because then you can't get like hit from bathroom. But we'll see. This is everything. Can the bridge on the jacuzzi wall go down or will the bandit trick get it out? Corey Rob with a beautiful bandit trick that is absolutely ridiculous timing. The Capital fired a firebolt into that hole just so he was taking damage as the bandit trick goes off. But he's able to get it and survive. He's able to survive. That's absolutely unbelievable timing there from Corey Rob. And as the second charge goes down, that Capital Firebolt should spell an end to him if he tries to go for the trick. He will not try to. Smart play by Cory Rob there, just electing to play his life instead. And that's a really good attack, just to be able to get the Jacuzzi Wall open. It seems like, yep, that Castle Barricade being hit out was not the play. And there's that Ash Charge being put onto the Mira. It's going to break it, and now Salty Boyd cannot have that view and access onto Jacuzzi Wall. If he wants to do anything or give any intel, he has to full swing. It's not a smart idea when you have so many attackers stacked up. And right now, Karma's just trying to find the entry pick. Here's the rip of the Nitro. It's probably just a bait. Nope, never mind. The toss out is going to happen, but it's going to find nothing. As the pick also comes on to Rapid, and now Charm as well. Cory Rob taking this engagement is not a likely one that he will win, and that's exactly what's going to happen. It is going to be the engagement though in the bathroom and Salty Boy is going to find it. Plant going down. Are St. Clair aware of this? Do they have anything that can deny? Salty Boy is trying to get to the window. He has no clue. He's probably just going to hold the cross. And if he can try to find this player and there it is, he should be able to get the pick. But in a 2v2 scenario as Koi Rob is DBNO, you have a player in cash and a player outside of the gym window. You need to try to take your swing. It's going to be the cross angle hold held from construction. It should be able to pick up the kill. That's exactly what's going to happen on the side of Drexel. The second one should come through from the gym window and that's going to be exactly what goes down. I believe it was the Jaeger really wanted to take the jump out onto the gym window. However, the cash cross angle from the ace was being held. So the second that that jump out happens, the ace would have his number. Really good offensive awareness there and offensive play on the side of Drexel as they tie this game up five apiece. Yeah, no, we could see the smokes were doing some work. Just that plant perfectly executed gets them the plant. They get out, Attackers they can properly get that done. And I mean, can. afterwards, it was just.
clean. Yeah, it was a clean up. It cleaned up very, very well. And you just gotta assume right now, it, this game has been so like back and forth, back and forth. I thought Saints were gonna pull away when they had that 3 1 lead, but Drexel just came back immediately. So you have to assume here, both sides very comfortable on the offense and the attack. It's, uh, I would very, uh,. I wouldn't be very surprised at all if this one goes to overtime. If this one goes to 6-6, six, six, first one to eight takes it no matter what. So it's going to be interesting to see. I would expect this to go to overtime though, as Rapid sets up some head holes onto Cash, which were actually the undoing of that last offensive hold. It's going to be interesting to see if they can just keep that construction or Cash control this time, hopefully not giving it up to Drexel, who can use that cross angle on any jump outs on right, windows. This is gonna sound like a dumb question. Is there a way to put C4 on a drone and kamikaze the drone? So drones are only used on attack. C4 is only used on defense. Oh, darn. And no, the C4 would not stick to the drone. However, in a show match between content creators, that would be very funny. But that is not how that works. Hard reaching charges from the Capitao should eliminate these gym windows. And I wonder, has Cory Rob prepped the castle barricade yet again? I believe he's going to look to do that just right now. And as he tries to look for this bandit trick, it's going to be a game of whether he can survive the Capitao firebolt that should come through the doorway of the castle barricade. Just enough to start damaging him as he tries to get that bandit trick down. That's going to be the name of the game. And the goon six coming out, the gone six, me and my friends call it the goon and it should take care of that castle barricade on that one ping and as the bandit comes onto the ball to try to trick the thermite charge it seems like this fire will deny that from happening jacuzzi wall is being taken right now i doubt cory rob is going to try the trick he will not the angle from jim being found out by the capital though and what an angle from rapid just using the slot in between the stairs to peek onto that balcony it's going to force Ducks to actually drop off as he is going to take some damage from that as well uh, from the angle being held, sorry, not the drop. And as this ace tries to get up into CC, it's going to be interesting to see how they clear Rapid. And there it is, the ace will find it. And with that Ash going onto the mirror window, it should be taken out as well. However, the Ash is down and this C4 should finish her off, probably just waiting and listening for a revive noise. The second they hear the Ash getting res, that C4 should be chucked out and it might be a double kill. It's going to find the one, but they baited the res and the drop off the Jacuzzi. Just the sound bait of the drop off was enough to let the mirror rip the Nitro. And it's only going to find one now instead of two. Really smart play there by Drexel, just to make sure that they don't waste the lives of another one of their attackers to a Nitro cell. Would it have been possible to like back him up even more or like could he not back up more? If he backs up more then the angle being held from the main stairs would just be swung and the down player would be killed. So it is a little bit of a weird scenario to put your attackers in. And as the ace charges now come onto the CC wall, Jaeger has to take the swing onto the Capitao and that is not a fight he will win. Logistics angle being held now from the Mira. And this is going to be what the round comes down to is 20 seconds are going to go on the board. The engagement should come soon. And this is going to be everything. Corey Robb on this hold on the logistics Mira. They've done a horrible job of trying to clear him out. And now they're gonna have to pay the price for if this is going to come back to bite them. The cross angle being held. The Bennett needs to make a play. The plant's going to be shut down, but the Mira's going to be taken. Another pick from the Mira on the logistics. They know the final player taking swings inside of logistics. Needs to find one. He's going to find one on the logistics, but he's not going to find the other on the back. Bathroom swing, the Frost doing a really good job of playing time there, and as the smokes go down, everything comes to a divine halt. Plant not being able to be secured, a really good round there, and a hectic one from St. Clair. Yeah, I know a lot of stuff going on, and like there was just so much utility coming out in that last burst, uh, or right before that last burst, and then all of a sudden everybody goes, everything goes crashing down, everybody just runs into it. And it's guns a blazing. We saw one headshot coming out, turns around, tries to get the other kill. Time runs yeah, out right before he can. Uh, so we're not padding those KDs, but. <laughs> it was, that round was just completely back and forth. I really love the play of the Drexel attacker dropping off the Jacuzzi just to sound bait the res so the mirror would waste the Nitro Cell. That was really smart. And then as well as just the Cory Rob just standing tall, standing strong on that logistics mirror hold as well. I mean, both sides were just doing so many good things, but at the end of the day, when you have 20 seconds left and you need to force an engagement onto a mirror hold, it's most likely not going to happen. Paying the price there is Drexel. And right now, if I'm Drexel on match point, uh, well, sorry, St. Clair on match point, but if I'm Drexel facing a match point, 
I would think that right now the main thing you need to work on is kind of speeding up your takes. So far they've been very slow and methodical and as Solus takes out a free drone, she should be able to get this barricade down, scot free and get out of dodge. She's going to do exactly just that and I expect the Solus now to just take logistic control and try to find anything onto the, onto the kitchen hatch. Ace is going to open up Dig, and that is very interesting because they usually don't do this uh, until later round from what Drexel has done so far, but I like that they're again speeding it up. Let's just take everything free that we can get right now. Don't worry about all this other stuff that we need to really drone out for the uh, early part of the round uh, until after we take what is given to us. That Dig wall is free. You might as well get it done and over with. You want to have that done early. It keeps St. Clair guessing on where your attack could come from when, and as these goo mines go down from Rapid, the longer he stays alive, the longer it's going to just have an effect on St. Clair's chances of winning. More goo mines he throws down is going to be more intel he can gather. Drone's going to be shot, and if I were Rapid right now, I'd probably want to drop that hatch in Con. Don't want to overstay your welcome, and that's going to be exactly what Rapid does. Taking out yet another drone. Rapid taking out lots of drones, lots of intel right now, and the intel gathering game from Drexel is growing thin as that Solus can just ping two more drones with their scanner, and Rapid will be aware of their positions. Capitao trying to find a wall bang. They think that Rapid's still up here, but that is not the case. He is long gone, and now this Yin Capitao clear is going to have to wait. They need to try to find the pick onto the Warden. That is going to be what does it all for the round. But as Rapid stays alive and the time goes down, this is another stalling play by St. Clair. Drexel hasn't done barely anything. Drexel hasn't done anything really to take uh, advance onto the site. And with a minute left, you have to assume that it's just going to come down to a dominant hold from St. Clair. With five alive though, anything could happen. It's just gonna be hard to enter here. I don't really know how they're going to find their point of entry. There is a take on Tomoto finally, but with only a minute left on the round and Rapid with blue control still, with no contestion, it just doesn't, it just doesn't seem like Drexel's really all there offensively. Maybe they just gotta YOLO it and run it. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy Jenkins style. That's going to most likely be their plan of attack as Blue Hatch does get opened up. Rapid on Blue here. He has the hold on to Moto. And if Salty Boy can just cover hit Rapid's Blue as Rapid can cover the Moto drop, Rapid will hear the Goomine going off. Drone being, no, not found out. And there it is. It's going to probably be a Moto drop and a Blue drop. They're probably going to try to pinch Church. But in order to do that, you got to clear out Rapid. And as he swings the hatch, you would have thought that would have been the end for the Ying. Not quite, though, as this kitchen hatch just finally starts to get opened up, but it will not happen. The impact trick to stop it. Rapid's going to find one onto yeah, Ducks as well. The player in Dig is known. This should be a kill for them as well. Korob finding one. It's going to be the Dig player still alive, but as the players all fall on the side of Drexel, everyone knows where this last attacker is. Beautiful job by St. Clair in what I believe was a very dominant basement hold. They're going to take this first map, seven to five. Very good execution on St. Clair. Really locking down that area. Not letting them do anything. I mean, they were desperate for any opening to push and they didn't have one. So that means they had to create it. They couldn't create one. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Leroy Jenkins is nice, but at the end of the day, um, it's not a winning strategy. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the end of that clip with Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, that raid didn't go well. And uh, well, we saw it happen here too. Uh, as we are going down to the TriCast now, uh, we've got a little bit of TFT and some Fortnite getting ready to go here. Uh, so when we're talking about TFT here, as we can see, oh my, he is very efficient with his mouse movements. All right, cool. Um, that is, I, I, okay, I don't know if you, <laughs> play uh, TFT at all, but Go crazy, Gabriel. He's, he is moving his characters so much, like I don't even know what he's doing. So many decisions being made and he is teetering between the two and he's like, oh, should I go for this or that or this or that? Uh, but yeah, as we can see here, so we've got Pentakill, uh, so we have an Olaf here. Um, we've got Superfan with that Lilia, um, the Kennen, I believe, in the back line, uh, along with a Nar, um, but very grouped towards the top. Uh, which, which side is that? That's the, that's the left side. Yes, that is left side. Uh, top left side being very much the um, spot to group here. So probably going to be looking for more of a front heavy co team comp, right? Not really relying on those DPSs just yet. Um, but yeah, back lines could definitely be um, something that we don't see coming out from our players here. 
um, mostly front-heavy bruiser comps, which is kind of what Pentakill is more centered around, uh, along with, uh, oh, what's the other one? Um, Country. Country and Pentakill are mostly the ones that are in the meta right now. But of course, as we all know, uh, champions come for, in a pool, right? So if you don't pick them up, somebody else will. But if you pick them up, nobody else can, which means that those rotations need to be handled carefully, and you need to make sure that you keep your eyes on what the other players are using too, because that means that it limits what you can use. If everybody's going for pentakill, nobody's going for pentakill, because nobody has access to them, right? But that means that if everybody's going for their each and individual one, well, then you're just going to end up with the strongest one, being pentakill and or country, depending on how you build them. Um, they're going to win, right? So you have to be able to limit those supplies and those resources from those other players while still giving yourself enough resources that you can play, right? Because let's be honest, but if you're stuck with a bunch of tier ones, you're not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, so as we can see here, uh, Olaf doing some pretty good work uh, in their team composition, really, really getting that damage through. Uh, Olaf, I mean, in the standard game is terrifying at level one. And here he seems to be kind of like the center uh, of this team composition. Uh, as we can see, right, the super fan coming out. Um, so it's a three and three, right? So that means that each character here, they have one character that does both and then two characters on the, because um, they're team comp is three, right? Um, so they have one character, or sorry, two characters that have uh, both traits, and then another character, or two single characters, or single trait characters, I should say. Gabriel, uh, who yeah, do you yeah. think Tommy's looking to target right now in the carousel? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Probably another Pentakill character, but that might not be the decision to go for here, as the carousel is about to turn to his side. Um, so we're going to be seeing what he picks up. He picks up a, a that's an echo. Okay. I think he might've gone for the item itself. The needlessly large rod, uh, definitely coming in useful for the more, those more backline censured, um, team comps with the rage blade, which infinitely stacks, uh, attack speed, right? Uh, so he might actually want to go for something more centered around a backline, but we will see how that goes. Um, the biggest thing that we can see here in his shop, right? He has rushed level four um, in that in those first fights, right? Going for the level five, an extra character, right? More characters means more tankiness, means more DPS, right? Um, but we're gonna be kind of wondering how that's going to hand out for him. Uh, his opponent not deciding to go for that level five, Definitely going for a backline centered uh, team composition here. As we can see, the Vi being the only front line, we see a Vex uh, kind of in the middle of that screen trying to deal that damage, but not going to be able to. That is an Olaf, ladies and gentlemen. It does not die. Um, and we're going to be seeing another round heading over to our St. Clair player here. Um, so, yeah, big problem with backline. Uh, compositions is that backline compositions rely on the fact that your frontline can last long enough for your backline to shred the enemy's frontline, right? Uh, which means if your frontline doesn't last long enough to the entire enemy team, you're kind of screwed, right? Usually you're going to see like two lines where you're going to have like frontline, frontline, and then backline, backline, and they're each hitting the frontline of each other, and whichever frontline falls first loses, right? Um, but of course, with that rage blade, that's kind of a modifier that can happen where, okay, yeah, we have the rage blade. As long as our rage blade stacks, right, that's more and more damage. That DPS is going up every single time they auto attack, which basically just turns that character into a blender. Um, and whatever goes in within their auto attack range is, well, blended. Um, but with a front heavy team composition, you don't have that backline, right? So your damage is all dealt with bruisers. And we can see here, their next trait that comes online is the bruiser trait with two characters within that category. Uh, so that means that they're going to have a lot more HP to play with. Uh, that's more damage that the back lines need to deal. And that's more um, time for the front lines to shred through the front lines of the opponent team. I am realizing I'm saying front line and back line so much that people are probably getting confused. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. I mean, listen... <clears throat> TFT being one of your specialties, right? Well, yeah, I say just go crazy, right? <laughs> so as we get into some Fortnite here, I'll look back on you on some TFT later. Seems like the down player, uh, I believe that is Teo, who was just downed. Not very usual, actually, to see. However, I believe his duo has gotten the pick, and that is true. So they will hit the res. No hard feelings, no problems. 
and uh, they're likely to just sit and wait, especially in a game where placement means so much. However, footsteps actually being heard above. There's probably like an aggressive push that's coming through. Gunshots as well from the sound markers on Teo's screen. It seems like the push is most likely coming through. Teo and his duel might have to take a fight here. We'll see, though. However, what I will say, what I was going to say is, Fortnite, obviously, especially in these tournament settings, we're going to get to that, like, final circle where everyone's towering on top of each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, and there's still going to be, like, 30 people left. <laughs> because the name of the game, especially in a tournament setting, isn't to go in guns blazing. You don't want to give up your lives that early. You want to just build mats that you can have in the end so you can just keep building. Whoever usually has the most mats in the end on that huge tower up that we usually see in that final circle is usually the one who comes out victorious. Because yep. you can just kind of get out of certain situations, create more editable areas for you, right? Use more mats to just engage aggressively. So it's just a, really a game of mats when it comes down to it in the end. So you don't want to be engaging enemies early, uh, especially if you don't have that many mats, because they'll most likely just outbuild you, and you just need to play placement. Yeah, I don't want to be outbuilt, but you also want to be able to stay alive, right? So you want to like limit the amount of engagements that you take. Exactly. But you also need to make sure that you do take some engagements because the other teams are going to be, ta you know, dealing damage um, and getting kills, right? And this is a points-based game here, uh, so. Whether you're number one in terms of, you know, I got the last kill, yes, but each kill is worth, I think you said, two points in the pregame. Yes. So those kills still matter, right? You need to make sure that you get those kills so that you're able to actually... Oh, hold on here. We're seeing some damage splashing onto the enemy. Lots of editing coming out. Uh, damage done to the St. Clair players here. they got to watch out. <clears throat> Yeah, Mateo's just in a little bit of a rough spot right now. He has to pop that med kit. I believe he's only on about 40 health, if I had to guess. No shields either. So a little bit of a dangerous spot early for our St. Clair Saints. And as we go into full screen now, we will see that, yes, with I believe that is 57 people left. Yes, that is correct. Uh, they are most likely looking to either get aggressive on these players just to quickly get these points and mats that they have. And that's going to be exactly what happens. Teo building up <laughs> furiously. And there we go. It is going to be unknown with the quick pickup on the kill. So another two points going to St. Clair. Yeah, we saw him pulling out the 90s, <laughs> getting up on that high ground. Doesn't Didn't end up needing the high ground, of course. Uh, teammate pulling Oh, in uh, clearing out the threat. But here, editing his way <laughs> through his own buildings. Uh, definitely getting in the way afterwards when you want to start looting. Uh, but yeah, biggest thing here that we're going to have to take into consideration is, like, St. Clair is getting a lot of that damage through in those kills. Um, so now, do they want to play for placement? Do they want to play for more kills? Make sure that they just get one really big one and then, you know, forget the rest? What, 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 what will be their strategy for this game? Yeah, and I mean, that's the question again. It's just about finding that balance between knowing when and where to get aggressive. And, uh, yeah, you know, Teo and Unknown, you know, they've been doing really good for the Saints so far. I expect to see more good results out of them, and we'll touch on them a little bit later. Getting back on the TFT, Gabriel, take it away. Yeah, TFT is looking pretty good here. We can see there's a KDA comp uh, coming out. The Pentak, I think that's a Pentakill Country uh, composition that our player has settled on. We see uh, two Tom Kenches. Uh, wait, no, that is a super, wait. Only super fans. Is he opting for a uh, a possible loss here? Um, you know, again, kind of getting on that loss streak to get that keep that gold up, reset their uh, team composition is a possibility here. Um, but yeah, as we can see, yeah, probably going to opt for that loss streak. We can see kind of the team he's going for: Lilia, Kale, Nico, Nar, Mordekaiser, and Viego. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of KDA, a little bit of Pentakill, um, and oh, hold on, opting for the Akali too. Hmm, okay, so they're going a little bit more for a late-game comp, so that's going to be really expensive. Might be opting just to build up his economy here, um, making sure that he has that extra gold coming in so that he can get those level-ups and buy those uh, characters here. Looking for the carousel, going to get the Nico uh, with the gauntlet, uh, which means extra uh, gauntlets deal crit damage, or if you put it on a character, uh, they give crit chance, right? Uh, which means... It, crit is kind of a weird mechanic when it comes to TFT. In League, it's really straightforward. Crit is useful, build it on ADCs, or if you're a funny Yasuo player. Um, 
But other than that, or I, I guess Trendemir and okay, you know what? I'm not gonna get into who builds melee crit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't yeah, build yeah. melee crit, but whatever. Um, but yeah, Attackers. you can see here, KDE, um, KDE logos on the ground showing up here, so that KDE buff is online, <laughs> and we're seeing a lot more. And then uh, we got some siege going on. Reload! Yeah, so I mean, if you you know if you want to finish on uh, TFT before we dive in, I'm more than happy to uh, let you go on that. But I will say we are on skyscraper as our map. Ooh, okay. So what what, what does skyscraper do? <laughs> so no, <laughs> skyscraper is just the map that we've chosen. So skyscraper is uh, a map that usually favors, I believe, the defense. Yeah, okay. yeah, at times because usually people like to hold geisha and karaoke. That's exactly what the Saints are trying to do here. And the next edition is usually a good defensive option as well. As St. Clair gets into it from the lineup, we can tell they are on defense first. Salty Boy going to be on the Legion instead of Rapid, who is going to pick up that DMR, who I know Rapid is a lethal force on that Aruni, especially with the EBR Mark 14 DMR. So it's going to be interesting to see if Rapid can kind of light it up on entry in a game where last game, despite a Saints win, didn't have the best performance. So. As they get into it, you know, let's look at the attacking side real quick. We have a Thatcher Thermite combo. The buck is going to be played as well. Interesting picks on the Brava and the Finca. I have to imagine that's usually for dealing with those Thorn gadgets and Goo Mines. What Brava does is she deploys a drone that hacks enemy gadgets that have electricity through them, and they turn them onto the offensive side. So they start oh. to affect defenders. Wait, Uno so, reverse card. Yes, exactly. Okay. Oh, and those Runigates as well. And as that Thorn gadget comes into uh, to try to take out the Thatcher, it isn't really necessarily more of a gadget that they looked for pick on, but it does make a loud noise, so it gives away the Thatcher's position. Oh. Everybody kind of knows now that they're kind of looking towards a sort of drum take, it looks like, as Charm is going to find nothing here on the stairs. Buck hitting the goo mine on entry. Those and things are first so pick annoying. is going to be from Brava. He takes out the lesion as well. That's not a pick you want to have go down, as I explained before. Oh, and Rapid's going to fall as well. Wow, really good entry from Drexel so far as they're going to take out Rapid and Salty Boy and Cory Rob. This Thermite is on absolute fire. He's just kind of taking these engagements and swing, but he's getting the kills. Now a little oh, bit of no, rebuttal good. being thrown back from the Saints. However, with the angle being thrown out there and OSD with some brilliant shots, it's not going to last for very long. This defense has been cut out through countless swings. Up with a little bit of questionable aim, but he switched. He, fl he fixes it. He fixes it, okay? He comes back, he fixes it. <laughs> really good round by Drexel. I, uh, oh, I believe... A uh, DC? Yeah, I believe one of our players is DC'd, so we will probably have to go to a rehost. That's okay, though, because you were going on about TFT, and you're going to have more time to do so, my friend. Yeah, so as we can see here with the team composition, we've got Pentacle coming out, uh, opting out of the KDA for now. Uh, of course, it, you kind of have to adapt to what your enemies are building, and that's kind of the thing um, when you're playing. Oh, hold on here. What do we have as a tank? Is that that's not a that is a tank cannon? All right, a tank cannon. Never thought I'd see the day, but then again, this is TFT, not normal League of Legends. So, well, I mean, it is. It's it's a stock game mode. Uh, but yeah, as we can see here, another front heavy composition. Nonetheless, the only backline that he has is the kale, and guess what the kale has? What? Two Rage Blades! <laughs> so oh, just infinite boy. attack speed. Yeah, so just like a, a little bit of insight on how the Rage Blade Just because you mentioned works. it before. Yeah. The Rage Blade, basically what it does is, every time you, uh, your characters auto attack, right, they deal... Oh, hold on. They gain attack speed. Hold that thought, though, as it appears that Teo and Unknown have found yet another pick. So that's just two more points on the board. Let's see what they got going on right now. They're looking like they're probably going to try to heal juice. up a little bit. Just try to, oh, actually, I don't actually know what that does. That's a new item that I'm not aware of, but they have minis, they have shields, they have health, hey, they healing? have mats. They have a lot of mats, actually, and it's looking pretty good as we get into what is probably the, judging by the range, the third or fourth last circle before final circle, but with Oh wow, only like 33 people alive. I did Wait, not what? expect there to be that little. You uh, said like 50. Yeah, you know, you would have thought more players would have been live. Maybe a little more of here. an aggressive lobby. 
And yeah, that's just a perfect amount of loot right there. You see the med kits, you see the big pots, the minis as well. And uh, they should be living on heals. Yeah, wow, 33 people left, and I was completely wrong. That is like, it's a blood probably the second circle. I, I cannot believe that. That is usually not something you see very often. However, with max mats on brick and wood, for what I can tell, Teo and Unknown seem to be uh, living very lavishly right now. And you got to think that they're probably pretty comfortable. Yeah, I mean, just from everything that they have, this is, honestly, just looking at the, like, the amount of death, this looks more like an Apex lobby. All right, it's just a, a little bit of insight on Apex. Apex, you have like everybody dying within the first yeah, five, 10 minutes. And then you have a ton of circles with nothing. And then the last circle, everybody dies again. <laughs> See, so usually, I mean, you could go with that. I would tend to usually think that in better lobbies, uh, usually more trios do end up staying alive for yeah, the that final circle. You do get sort of that same effect in BRs. So it's just, again, very surprising to see that there's this little player count at this early stage of the game. Yeah, I guess people are just really bloodthirsty. Oh, hold on. The wow. sniper coming out, one-shotting. That is insane. And now Teo just kind of has to wait and sit patiently. And if you're unknown right now, you are not in a very good place. This would be a quite surprising finish for the Saints. You think you're all good, and then all of a sudden, Teo just takes an absolute beam of a headshot, and that's going to be all she wrote. Very surprising there. You don't usually see the Saints placing that low. But in a game that's been very aggressive so far from player count, I guess anything could happen, and the Saints just kind of got caught lacking. Yeah, people are bloodthirsty, and that, <laughs> that's what happens. But on the side of TFT, we're seeing here the breakout coming out. Pentakill as their main super fan, edgelord, KDA and Sentinel. That is a lot of buffs. <laughs> so I think here we're looking more towards a composition that is stacked um, more around multi buffs than one singular strong buff. Uh, so these are basically you just put in as many buffs as you can from as many uh, triples or double um, stat or. I guess, class uh, characters as you can. Uh, and basically, thanks to this, it just means that you have more base stats uh, than your opponent. Although, then again, this game is mostly centered around base stats. Um, but the placement also can screw a lot of people over because KDA um, slots are pretty much all reliant on good old faithful RNGs. So you don't know which slots you're going to get. Which means if you have the bad slots, you can have a very bad T composition. But as we can see here, the Kale is dealing so much damage in that back line. The frontline comp is working super well. So many frontline traits coming into action, making sure that their frontline is hella tanky. I believe that is a gunblade also on the Kale as the, her third item. Um, basically meaning that she heals um, her frontline. As she auto attacks, her auto attacks again stack up with both of those rage blades, which means she has so much coming through. And yeah, those buffs just stack up, and you have an undying front line and a lot of damage coming out from the Kale. But on the side of Rainbow Six Siege, what is going on? Well, it seems like we are actually back from our rehost, and that's actually very surprising. Usually rehosts take a lot longer, but I guess we're lucky. Comes back very quickly. And this time, it seems like an an exhibition hold is going to be uh, in progress here. And as we were going to see uh, in the bottom left, uh, Omega Strikers won map one. So Omega Strikers also going down underway. However, on to Siege. And it appears that, sorry, yes, yeah, sorry, Saints won map one in Omega Strikers, obviously. And uh, it appears that in Siege, as the exhibition hold goes down, Here we go. Stay back. it's going to be interesting to see where the buff enters from. Breach going through as well, I'm assuming, on that exhibition wall, and that's going to be exactly the take. Oh, sorry, I thought there was an exhibition hold just because of how much utility they're throwing down. My bad, it's going to be another karaoke hold. My fault there. So St. Clair on the karaoke hold. That means that the construction or the exhibition wall wasn't, you know, that important. It was just kind of more of a, you know, hey, let's hold the position as long as we can, and then we can kind of fall back once they throw their utility away on that wall that ultimately won't really matter in the end. So a decent start for the Saints. However, 
Rounds cannot be won in utility alone. Picks gotta come out at some point. Yep. So if you're St. Clair, you have to just sit, let time burn, don't overpeak, don't do anything too stupid, and Drexel should just hopefully walk into your cross angles. Buck yeah. trying to get aggressive and he tries to take the rotate through Dragon. He's looking to find a pick right now onto the player, oh, just close. sitting behind that half wall. And the cross is also being held from below, getting really close up now on that Dragon side. And it appears that Jox has fallen back. That is the smart play to make. Cory Rob's going to find one onto the Thatcher out of all people. That is a bad pick to give up, as I don't believe the Geisha wall has been opened yet. It has actually. Okay, so it's not that bad of a pick to lose. Good confirmation on that from our observer. And now, it seems that Drexel's push is going to have to be a volatile one. They have to start swinging stuff, and that's what you want to see if you're on St. Clair on defense. Charm picking up one onto Dragon. And now, the Aruni, I don't believe, who saw the Brava drone. That is good intel from the Brava. Will they have the floor bang? No, not quite. With 15 seconds left, too, they're going to be hitting goo mines. They're going to have to start taking swings. It's not going to go well on the side of Drexel. And St. Clair should just clean up. It's going to be exactly that with the final engagement coming onto red stairs. Jock's doing a beautiful job of just taking the intel as it comes. And that was a great round. A good Geisha hold there from the Saints. Very, very good execution on the side of Saints. But going over two Omega Strikers here. Goal done by... Uh, is that Shiro? Yeah, that is Shiro Aisu. Uh, getting the goal down onto the uh, Nexus, I believe. Really good performance here. Uh, yeah, they are, oh wow, they are doing very, very well right now on this map. Punting the, uh, God, the, it, it's the core. I need to remember that it's called the core. Punting the core into the black hole, getting that first inhibitor down, uh, opening up that shield very, very soon once it gets used up. Lots of abilities coming out here, trying to get those things off their cooldowns, trying to get some damage onto the core. Uh, we're, oh, we might get a rebound here. No, no rebounds coming out. Lots of kicking, lot, oh, hold on here. Yep, yeah, second inhibitor does end up going down, playing around the black hole here, though. We got a core flip coming out uh, on the side of St. Clair Saints. They gotta watch out, make sure that goes well. Oh, 15 seconds left, all right, they gotta watch out with their time. Oh, shot oh, just doesn't connect to the goal. One inhibitor down on the side of St. Clair. One inhibitor down, uh, or two inhibitors. Okay, two inhibitors down on both sides. Shiro is out of the fight here. It is a 2v3. They gotta watch out. Shiro just comes back. Ability coming out. Hits the, <laughs> oh my God. Hits it right into the net. Very, very, very well executed on the side of Shiro here. You see a few emotes coming out. Very good performance on that overtime here. We're going to be seeing some more utility being acquired uh, on both sides. And now as we get back into Rainbow Six Siege, it seems like that exhibition take is going to be the next plan of defense for St. Clair. Rapid holding a very good angle onto any players who are trying to get oh, from the E room. <laughs> and now... This is going to be big here. The engagement from the Sludge proximity alarm going off, so they are aware of the Sludge's position, and now we'll take out the proxy alarm, but it's already too late. Saints do know where that player is. Often you gather more intel before they challenge onto Drum. It's going to be the Thermite, who I believe has a little bit of an inkling of Rapid roaming down below. I believe Drexel does have an idea of where Rapid is sitting on that Aruni, and now Charm He's just kind of opting to kind of run around site. He's just trying to stay low. And yes, as Rapid does have like one shot on him. So he has, he's been, his HP has been dwindled down. He's now one shot. That was a pretty good uh, roam clear there from Drexel. I don't believe they will have to worry about too much more as this round progresses as I look at the operator lineup. Jox is going to find the first kill onto the Gridlock. And that is a huge pick as well because Gridlock has so much utility used in late round that it's just not going to be available now. Castle being taken down as well. However, his utility should have already all been placed down. So it's just going to kind of be a little more of a trade back on the side of Drexel Rapid trying to hold those stairs. And it's going to be a power position that he needs to try to hang on to. Speaking of power positions, that's a really good one. A really good pick onto Bar as well. And now as trades come back, Charm's going to find the refrag for his buddy Mute. 
as the engagements come in, they yeah, realize yeah. that they're going to have to take drum side, and they're sitting in office balcony terrace. And as the diffuser gets picked up, now the swing from drum should come in, and that's going to be exactly what happens. Really good job from Salty Boy on that Mozzie, just realizing that the only other place the attacker can come from is terrace. He finds the swing, he finds the pick. St. Clair with the take on defense. St. Clair 1-0 right now, doing very, very well. Uh, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a tricast here. Doing really well on the side of TFT, uh, as we can see. The composition is looking like it's forming up a lot. I think I'm seeing eight traits active right now, uh, which is an exceedingly large amount of traits uh, active at once in one composition. We can see that Kale protected. Um, there is a Karthus, I believe, uh, also as a backline mage. Um, so yeah, Kale kind of switching sides here and there, depending on who's going up against who. Um, but yeah, the front line seems to be pretty uniform. Uh, all, of course, on those KDA slots. Don't want to miss up out on those buffs. Uh, with Karthus here, uh, with a Stride Breaker and two Jack Shows. That, oh my god. Good thing this isn't a real game of League, because I would be... Uh, I would, I would be severely confused as to why there is practically a tank Karthus. Um, but here, the ooh, the front line not lasting very long. Kale getting taken out by the enemy. Uh, I think that was a front line that actually dealt most of the damage there. So they got to watch out, right? Um, not every team composition is going to be at the advantage here. As we can see on the side of Omega Strikers, goal made by Shiro again. Very, very good execution. Um, I mean, Shiro, you know, made it to the top 10 NA, I think, in Omega Strikers. Uh, so very, very good player. We're really lucky to have him here. Um, so definitely does make it uh, a hard match to go up against. Uh, as we can see him here playing that front line, playing as a striker, does end up going down. Uh, he's got to watch, or his team here has to watch out uh, as they do that, but they should be... Oh, okay, hold on. Second inhibitor here going down. Shiro comes back up. They are ready to go. That... Oh, okay, hold on. Nexus here. Gotta watch out. Core does get tossed around a little bit, but does end up hitting one of the inhibitors. All right, that does mean that they are one away from getting those, uh, those doors open, but they have to watch out here with their goalie trying to get that core outside of their zone. Dash coming out on the side of Shiro, trying to get that uh, the core somewhere else on the other half, but does succeed in doing so. Uh, we're seeing here a core flip coming out on the side um, of the red team. Ooh, good punt uh, on the side of Shiro here. Moving it onto the other side, but unfortunately does not quite work. Still ends up going to the side of St. Clair. Black hole back up once again. Goalie's gonna send that one back around. Ends up going into his goal though. St. Clair here getting scored on. 2-2 in the overtime. They've gotta watch out now. Alrighty, as we hop into this last match here, or this last round before, uh, number three, one minute into this. They've got the black hole up, playing around it. A lot of arcing. Uh, bouncing it off the walls, trying to get those ricochets around, does end up popping the black hole, uh, sends it a little bit of everywhere. First inhibitor, ooh, just skims by the first inhibitor though. They gotta watch out here. A lot of aggressive plays coming out on the side of the red team. Blue team does end up getting their own inhibitor back. Uh, ooh, beautiful dash from on the side of Shiro. Gets the second inhibitor down. Both teams have their inhibitors down. Shiro here, a little bit critical. He's got to watch out. Corflap comes out from the goalie. Does end up trying to go for a kick, but doesn't quite connect. The ball is so close. Wow, okay. They were so close to getting that core in like three, four times, but it just didn't connect. Black Hole comes out right at the wrong time. They've got to watch out here. Shiro does end up getting the dash. Pushes it onto the other side. Goalie really trying to get it away from their side, but it's, it's not working. They keep on sending it to their half. A beautiful, beautiful kick that sends the core right into the enemy's uh, base. Beautifully executed right there. Uh, but back onto the try stream here. Uh, as we can see, I believe they're drafting their last um, team composition on the side of 
uh, Rainbow Six Siege, and our Sinclair players are still in the lead on the Defenders side of TFT. Your bombs right, so as I was stating a little bit earlier, uh, Skyscraper is a little more of a defensive map. Not surprised that Sinclair goes up 3-1 to one here. Hopefully... They might get this 2-0 victory right now. Now, Ooh, I know okay. Drexel is only two rounds behind, but it's a pretty good start right now if you're looking onto the Saints. As we get into some TFT, Gabriel, what's going on? Uh, right now, we're seeing the top, I believe that, yeah, that is the top three here. It is pretty close, though. 29 HP with the number one slot. Uh, so they have to watch out. They have to make sure that they don't get countered uh, when it comes to the team compositions. Make sure they move around their characters. Make sure they keep track of who they're going up against. And who do you think Tommy's going to pick up on the carousel? That's a good question. I think he's going to go more for items uh, on this specific carousel because characters are pretty easy to come by, right? You can reroll pretty easily, um, mainly that the economy is pretty high. Uh, oh, hold on. Never mind. The economy is low right now. They only have about 10, not even 10 gold left. Uh, they are running on pennies. They're searching the cushions for extra gold. They Okay, they have to watch out here. Because this might actually spell their downfall. With the economy the way it is, they have to watch out how they're playing their gold and play it right. But here, yeah, opting for items actually does end up selling one of their characters, um, not for gold, but for items here. Uh, letting those items go to better characters here. We're seeing an Infinity Edge going onto the Akali. Oh, wait, Infinity Edge on an Akali. Never thought I'd ever say that. Um, but yeah, Infinity Edge here going onto the Akali, trying to get that extra crit damage down. We're going to be seeing this team composition and Israel ult coming out. Going to deal a lot of damage onto the team composition. But uh, as we can see here, that damage does come through. Oh, okay. Okay. They made it to the top two. This is the grand final. And looking at the health, St. Clair's contender has probably two, three matches that they can lose. They can afford to lose. But they only need to win one match, and that's GG. So really, really close here. They're one round off the Elder Drake. Or, yeah, I believe that is the Elder Drake uh, round for, you know, economy. Uh, so they need to win this, or else it's going to be a lot harder to win because then team positions can change and a bunch of other stuff can change, right? So... They really need to just wrap up this fight as quickly as possible. And as we can see here, a lot of damage coming out on the side of St. Clair. Uh, oh, hold on here. They're getting bursted down too, though. Down to the Kale. The Kale's not going to be able to deal out enough damage here. Yeah, okay, they have one more fight left. One more fight. At 14 HP, if you, I believe if you're in the number one slot, you do take uh, 14 damage or over 14 damage. So, yeah, they have one more fight left right after this Eldrick. Un unless they die to the Eldrick. Hey, that'd be embarrassing. Um... I hope I did not just cast your jinx that. Oh, please don't. Maybe the caster curse coming out here from Gabriel, but we'll see oh, how it all no. goes down right now. It, it shouldn't be caster curse, right? I mean, surely not. It's an Elder Drake. It's not that tanky. Uh, it's not like it fits the scuttle. I, I, I got one shot by a scuttle. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it was embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, team composition is getting adapted really quickly. We can see the Kiana coming out, actually. Really interesting purchase here. Uh, trying to choose between a Bloodthirster, a Jack Show, a Nash's Tooth, and I didn't get the time to see the other ones. They chose the Bloodthirster, slapping that onto the Akali. Hopefully, she's going to get to deal a lot more damage. We can see here the Alawi Tentacles coming out, also getting buffed by the KDA slots. Um, I, I believe, yeah, the buffs do apply here. Uh, so we're seeing big team composition. This is going to be the fight for all the marbles. Uh, so hopefully, this one comes through. Both comps, very similar. We can see both comps of their tentacles smashing a little bit everywhere, dealing big AoE damage here. Uh, ooh, hold on here. It's not looking good. Kale, we need the carry hit. Level 6. Oh. Oh, wait. Maybe. Oh. I said maybe they would survive, but no. Unlucky. Second place on the side of St. Clair. Still a really, really good performance. Just couldn't pull through at the end of the day. TFD is TFD. Sometimes it screws you over. And going uh, on to this fifth round, or sorry, sixth round now for Siege, oh, we can uh, see that St. Clair has taken the 4-1 
So, so far, there's going to be one more round, and then the sides are going to flip. So, Sinclair's done a really good job and a really dominant first half so far. And if we look at the kill board right now, players to look out for, Jocks and Salty Boy have just been going absolutely nuclear on the side of the Saints. Five and one and four and one combining for a nine and two between the two of them. And they've been doing a really good job of winning their gunfights. It's going to be interesting right now. We haven't seen too much of the Skyscraper map, so I'm really unable to kind of give a guess on to what Drexel needs to do differently. We've seen that they've kind of been losing their Thatcher a little bit early though from previous rounds. And I think what needs to happen there is that they're losing their early engagements. They need to be a little more patient on their utility, but they also need to know when to get aggressive. I think we've seen a couple of attacking rounds where they've had just too little time to get stuff done. And especially in that clubhouse game as well, that was also the case. So yep. it seems like both of these teams like kind of a slow methodical attack in a in a in a game right now in a meta right now where that just doesn't favor the attack amazing wall bang there coming out from jocks i'm assuming unless there was any util or intel on that player that that was probably just a no not a pre-fire there was no way they had to have a camera on him or something Probably a mozzie drone, if I had to be honest, and that's probably going to be what it is. They actually now have intel on the Capitao as well, so it's going to be interesting to see what else St. Clair can do to lock this half down. Really good start, though. Are they aware of the Capitao coming up red stairs? Only time will tell, and that time is now. It seems like Salty Boy with yet another kill onto Drexel. He is their nightmare right now and they need to find a way to deal with them and deal with them swiftly barricade being prepped but it's going to be the swing that comes out from cory rob he's going to find the pick onto the ash as well and right now you just have to think this is kind of spelling the end for this first half as the nomad goes down as well the jocks rapid to clean up the final one and in a round where i thought you would have to kind of you know talk to your players get your stuff back together it seems like they are just kind of Except, excepting the fact that they're kind of getting curb stomped here on this first half, probably just trying to end this one. I wouldn't be surprised if a timeout comes out here, but it doesn't seem like Drexel is opting to do so. And right now, Drexel needs to stare down the barrel of a 5-1 half in their favor if they want to bring this to overtime. Yeah, it is not looking good on their side. And uh, is the map... The map is uh, singular side, or defenders. Defenders, from being defenders by side or? Or? Yes, this map is defender side. Okay, yeah. St. Clair has won five rounds on defense. It's now going to be interesting to see, is this just Drexel putting themselves into a hole, or is this truly just a map in which both sides of the defense are going to be extremely dominant? Only time will tell, but we are going to be uh, having the due diligence of finding that out. Valkyrie. Just trying to set up some feet holes on the Geisha, trying to have that hold because it's in, it's important that you have those footholds there. You then get angles into Drum and into Terrace as well from Geisha. Smoke setting up, I believe, oh sorry, the Mew, I believe, setting up the rotate with that shotgun. And now Valk just searching for some Valkan placements. I do believe, yep, that is going to be the Warden to come out here. I don't necessarily agree with that pick. Uh, there is absolutely nothing other than Thermite's three flashbangs that the Warden can counter. So it's going to be a little uh, interesting to see see how that pick gets used, how useful that Warden does truly become in the end. I mean, to be fair, if there's a flashbang counterpick that, you don't want to deal with flashbangs. I might personally However, experience. the one guy with the bomb who has to plant is usually not going to be the one throwing the utility down. No, that is true. Uh, and especially to cover, they don't have any smokes. There's no operators like Ying being picked up here. It just doesn't seem like a pick that was all that useful. And I think Drexel might get punished for this. It was However, a miss input. Don't worry. only time will tell. They're going to try to clear out this castle barricade on Terrace. And right now, Karma is trying to get that hold on drum this is going to be extremely important from this drum and geisha hold because if they, if they can delay pressure onto terrace that will be all the time burn they need they just have to watch out for dragon and that is going to be the hard breaching charge placed there by i believe was rapid to kind of open up that avenue and as he breaks down that dragon barricade saint Clair now has access into dragon and terrace they're most likely going to just try to go for the swings onto the dragon side that's going to be exactly it i believe it's the warden holding that dragon and now as the grenade comes to clear the deployable shield, these next few engagements are going to spell everything on the side of Drexel. Every single engagement matters when you're staring down the long barrel of a five-round deficit. 
So you need to try to keep on your feet and you need to not give up any stupid engagements. It's going to be hard to do that though. A St. Clair sort of mount their pressure. However, Ooh, they're going to take the peak. On, it's going to be rapid. No trade coming through either. If you're the Drexel defender, I wouldn't keep holding this. I'd fall back even further. We're going to see if he can find the pick and no, he's going to get punished for staying a little too long. Swing from drum as well. And it's going to be the Jaeger picking it up. No refrag as well. He's going to be Karma in a little bit of a weird spot right now, especially with pressure coming from Terrace and, Dra and Dragon. The Dragon player going to be picked off though from the SMG 11. And so far Drexel has done a beautiful job of holding down this drum side. The Jaeger going to be picked off. And now it's going to be all down to the Valkyrie. I thought it was looking like such a decent defensive hold. And with a Nitro Cell in pocket, the plant denial has to come out. It's going to kill the planter. 32 seconds left. And in a 1v1 right now, Corey Robb needs to see if he can put the Saints up on match point. He knows the Valk's coming up right stairs. The call has been made. He's going to flank down main. He's going to find her through the back hallway. Finds the peak onto the player on red. Beautiful job by Corey Robb there. And he puts the Saints on match point. Yes, very good execution here. Saints is on match point, but there is the side swap coming up, right? If memory serves? Or did they already swap sides? I don't remember. Yes, they already swapped sides. So swap, okay. side swap happens after six rounds. Right, right, so right. So after the 5-1 now, the Saints are on attack. And because they've already picked up a round now and are on match point, 6-1, I mean, it's going to be so hard to come back from this. If Drexel gives up one round before the next five rounds, that's game. And that's series as well, because St. Clair already won that first map. So St. Clair could take the 7-1 or 7-2, etc., until it gets up to 6-6. Drexel quite literally needs to win every single defensive round from here on out if they want to bring this to overtime. Yeah, that is uh, that is not an easy task, but one they will try to fulfill. And the one they are hopefully up to the challenge for here. Um, they, I mean, how hard would that be? Extremely. I mean, there's mental going against you, right? I right. mean, yeah, yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. been able to find an answer the entire time. And you would have thought, okay, there's a round we can give up in the midst of this huge comeback. But it, it already has been given away. So if you're St. Clair right now, I would predict, honestly, I'm going to say it. With the mental coming through, I expect St. Clair to take this in the next two rounds for sure. I don't think Drexel has the mental game right now or the setup to kind of deal with this hold. I don't believe the castle's even set up all the holes needed to be uh, set up required in that exhibition. And as Rapid gets through this barricade on main stairs, it's going to be all about how they can clear out that Jaeger on drum. Castle trying to just sit behind bar. He's going to be the main kind oh, of- that expensive one. <laughs> He's going to be the main person to look to clear out. When you enter Terrace, he is going to be the person holding that down for Drexel. And interesting with the Azami as well, setting up those nice little hiding spots. And that is exactly what you don't want to see. St. Clair with the first pick. Make that two as well. Rapid going to find the next one. And he is into drum side. He has all the intel he needs. Camera's gone. And now if you're Drexel, you're staring at what is most likely a defeat. Especially with still two minutes left to be played. You got to start taking risks. Got to start taking swings. But it's not going to work out in Drexel's favor. As that is going to be Corey Rob with yet another pick onto the Grim. It's going to be an engagement on the Dragon. Finds one, needs to find two. It's not going to happen. Rapid with the refrag as Italian also finds another one. And now it's just going to be it as Corey Robb tries to make his way through Exhibition. He's going to do just that, peeking in and out of the Zombie Barricade. Not going to be there. Tries to find the swing and he's going to find exactly that. St. Clair with a dominant hold on Skyscraper. Yeah, and as we see the GG's going out in the chat, that will be the series. Uh, very good execution on the side of St. Clair. Uh, we saw in the first map, it was really close. They had to fight tooth and nail. And then on that second one, they just said, all right, guys, uh, put on the gaming glasses. We're going full tilt. And uh, full tilt, they did go. They absolutely dominated on that second map. And now, uh, we're, as we're moving on to the second round of TFT uh, and on to some Fortnite. <clears throat> and uh, I hate to say it, but it appears that Teo has been killed. That reboot timer is going down and he's spectating Unknown, who if I was Unknown right now, I would purely be playing for placement. Sure, if you can find a pick here or there, just as long as it doesn't spell doom for you is okay. But right now, placement matters for points more than picks do. So if you are Unknown, you just have to play it safe. 
So he's playing it safe. If this is this is the time where you want to be that really really annoying sniper in the hills that just so happens to yeah, pick off one person and then disappear for the rest of the match until you're in the top two and then picks you off. And I'm getting uh, word from uh, our director as well that our Omega Strikers match has concluded. Saints oh, do take okay. it 3-0 as well. So really good job from our Saints team there. Yeah, Saints team definitely strong uh, when it comes to Omega Striker. Uh, definitely a game that is more recent into the competitive scene, but very, very predominant and very, very strong. As we can see here, oh my god, Sneak 100 does not work! Wait, hold on, this is a highway robbery! He's stealing the car! Yeah, Unknown has to get out of there and get out quick as the bullets do rain down on him. You have to think this is probably going to spell doom soon for him. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is not looking good right now if you're St. Clair building up. Oh. However, the first oh. shots come through. Oh, but it's just the not going gun. to happen. Really difficult on the side of Fortnite. A 14th place finish and a 29th place finish. Not what we're used to seeing from our Saints, but you know what? It could be it worse. Just, it could be worse, and it just still happens happened that today was probably just not their day. Yeah, that happens, and when it does happen, it's not ideal. But as we can see here, on the side of TFT, we are seeing a backline, uh, a little bit, yeah, I guess a backline comp here uh, with the Jinx with a Runon's Hurricane here. Runon's Hurricane being an, abil uh, an item that gives ability haste and uh, some, I guess, AoE damage. It's not really AoE, but you can hit three targets instead of uh, only one with your attacks. Uh, Jinx, of course, being a really good character to have that Runon's Hurricane on because her auto attacks also explode on hit, uh, which means that it has more effects and deals a lot of AoE damage here. Uh, but as we can see in this first carousel, uh, wondering what they're going to opt for. Might want to go for something like a Rage Blade. Um, so that would be the Recurve Bow or the Needlessly Large Rod, but instead going to opt for for the, jewel, uh, the gauntlet here, possibly going for an infinity edge for that crit enhancement. Um, so going for probably one of those attack speed slash crit jinxes. Uh, this is like stereotypical jinx 101, um, which would be really interesting. He already has two tier two jinxes that will be terrifying in the late game if he can get that to a tier three. Although usually you don't see tier threes coming out on the side of professional TFT. Um, it, I mean, with the numbers, considering how early on in the game they are, it is a possibility but this is when you're going to see p other people buying jinxes whenever they hop on into their shops so that this way they can avoid having to deal with a tier 3 jinx right um but here as we can see he is trying to rush for that tier uh three jinx and that will be a big threat but as we can see because his economy is so focused on that he only has four characters um i mean so does his opponent but or, no, actually, his character is at five opponents. Never mind, I saw that right. Uh, they just lost their first one pretty darn quickly. Um, but, yeah, as we can see, Jinx, not really strong in the early game. Uh, definitely useful to have the Runons, but it's not going to deal that much damage when there is an entire enemy um, or an entire extra unit uh, going up against you here. So, not going to be going out very well here. Purchasing the Aphelios. Aphelios, a uh, pretty good champion. Not as 400 years as he is in Standard League of Legends uh, when it comes to TFT, which is always nice. Oh, opting to sell the Aphelios. Hold on here. What is he... What is this man cooking? This man is... Hmm. Probably opting for something a little bit different here. We're seeing the Pantheon, we're seeing the Vi, and we're seeing the Kennen here. Uh, so, they have already four punks two guardians and two rapid fires which is interesting here um maybe opting for something more along the sides of a back heavy comp where uh you try and get that front line to just kind of last long enough and then let the back line do everything here uh here going up against the amumu the amumu uh, doesn't really get shredded by the jinx here the jinx again doesn't have much damage but that annie does not die holy smokes her shield is annoying to deal with, and the Jinx is actually going to pull through here, get that damage on. The only downside to this is he lost his previous round, won this one. This means he doesn't get any extra uh, um, gold, right? If you're on a loss streak or if you're on a win streak, you get extra gold. But if you're just kind of teetering between the two, you don't get extra gold. And that is not ideal for your economy here. As we can see, 22 gold currently in the inventory, in the
the bag, um, trying to hold on to that, build up his economy, get more levels uh, eventually, of course. Right now, you don't want to buy your levels. This is an eco round. Uh, so you got to let those Krogs give you their items, as you can see them. Going for the Sauna Sprite, actually. A really, really good decision. I used to run the Sauna Sprite a lot. Uh, just a really, really good character uh, to use. Uh, because he absolutely does not have any buffs whatsoever. It's it's just... I mean, like, look at the guy. He looks pretty chill. <laughs> He's just chilling there. So, Gabriel, a quick yeah. question for you, right? Obviously, we see right now that Tommy is playing into the synergies of Punk, Guardian, and Rapid Fire. However, do you see this as his synergies that he will stick with? Or do you see him possibly mixing it up uh, late game? That's a good question, honestly. Considering the fact that he has a, a he's purchased another Jinx, he might actually try and stick with at least Rapid Fire. Uh, and Punk does seem to be a pretty good early game pick, but later on into the game, he might change his synergies to something else. Um, most predominantly, maybe going for a Bruiser Cop um, or for something like Pentakill. Uh, of course here just to like get a front line right because that jinx you want rapid fire to get that buff but at the same time you don't want too much rapid fire because building into rapid fire more than two is just pointless right you don't want more because the buff isn't that significant here as we can see the jinx gets stunned not able to dps and ends up actually getting killed uh, but as we can see here, that's more of going, what's going to be a KDA comp he's going up against at that present time. Um, but that is also the number one right now. So that is a little bit of a threat. That KDA comp probably not going to stay on too long though, because KDA, uh, of course, isn't something that... Uh, I mean, it, it's something that sticks around, but it's not one that is going to be your main one. You just do it for the slots, and then once you have KDA up, you don't touch it anymore. You don't want to invest more into KDA than what uh, you already have once you get those slots because the, the extra shots just aren't worth it, right? Um, but just looking at it right now, he does end up selling the, his second uh, Tier 2 Jinx, which means he will not be opting for the... Um, oh, wait, no. He didn't sell it. He placed it on the field. Huh? Okay, interesting decision here. So actually opting to... Place it on the field. I guess there weren't any other buffs he wanted to apply. Um, so here, getting that Jinx onto the field. S splitting up his characters in a different way here. Probably in preparation for whoever he's going up against. Yeah, as we can see. Just to make sure that the head-to-head -head is a full-on head-to-head. Maximizing the range of the Jinxes here. Uh, but we're going to be seeing how they play that out. The Lux Ultimate coming out, damaging in a straight line. Lots of damage coming through, but that is a three-item Tarek already going down. The Gragas on that Disco comp, though. Definitely tanky, but not tanky enough. The two Jinx is dealing a lot of damage here. Tier 1 Lox is not going to stand up against two Tier 2 Jinxes. Uh, so definitely a good team composition here coming out. We have a Tier 2 Vi now showing up. Uh, a second Tier 2 uh, tier 1 Jinx. One more tier one Jinx and he gets a tier three. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. So yeah, as we can see here, he's not overly investing into his levels because he wants to stay within that range where the probabilities of getting tier one units are higher so that he can get his tier two um, or his tier three Jinx up and running, right? Because once a tier three Jinx gets online, all you need is a recurve bow and a needlessly large rod and you have got yourself a complete shredder like that thing will shred through paper it'll shred through cardboard it'll shred through credit cards it'll shred through champions <laughs> at the exact same speed it does not care um that's that yeah that's that's jinx in a nutshell but of course you need to get her there and getting her there is a little bit of a challenge because it means that you need to put yourself at risk because with levels comes extra characters on the field. If you don't have those extra characters on the field, your chances of winning are a lot lower here. And because he teethers between the two, that means that he doesn't get that extra three or I believe it's like five gold maximum uh, from being on either a loss or a win streak. So he has to watch out for his economy here. But as we can see, he does have five saved up, does seem to opt for the, oh, Opts for the spatula, does end up getting it. Very, very good here. Probably opting for that spatula to get extra traits, right? Of course, uh, com combining the spatula with any other item does end up giving it certain traits. Those traits can come in very, very useful if you are behind, right? Because it gives you more buffs here. 
um, probably going to opt for something that gives some really quick either attack speed or some tankiness so that his front line can last just a teensy weensy bit longer without having to actually buy an entire unit just for extra tanks. Uh, but as we can see here, we've got the punk composition seeming to keep on going here. The twitch coming out. Uh, so what kind of team comp are they pointing out here? Jinx, Vi, Twitch, Pantheon. What else are they looking for? They're looking for the... Ooh, possibly a Senna? No, not the Senna. The Amumu. Okay, opting for an Emo, maybe? Maybe the Emo is the play here. But as we can see, Akali dashing around a little bit, but not going to do much in that back line. Hops back to the back line, but their front line is almost gone here, and it is... Oh my god! Uh, Seraphine just absolutely nuked that the back line. Flipped quick <laughs> okay uh wow there was a back line and then there wasn't <laughs> it's just that fast okay absolutely nukes the back line that is uh that is why you split up your back line or at least that's why i like splitting up my back line that way i have one on each corner and if one gets nuked the other one doesn't <laughs> But of course here, uh, it always depends on what you're going up against. Sometimes there's a lot of AOE on the back line. Sometimes there isn't. You gotta watch out for those. Definitely a threat, and that can turn the match very quickly. But yeah, here, as we can see, seems to be opting for a punk team composition um, with a side of rapid fire. And yeah, as we can see here, the tier three Jinx has officially come online. That is a massive threat to everything that is present only has the um runon's hurricane though so you have to watch out and oh yeah that's a tier three any actually okay we, we're seeing a lot of uh tier three one units uh which is kind of interesting to see but from that standpoint Holy smokes, that Olaf is not dying <laughs> on the other map. Uh, that is, yeah, that is a little bit of a threat. They might have to watch out Olaf, of course. Lots of um, Omni Vamp and Lifesteal, right? So you gotta watch out when it comes to that. On to the Wolves for the Eco round, though. Um, looking interesting. So we have a Twitch, we have a Jinx. Uh, very, very useful when it comes to that back line. Now they need to get that front line a little bit more bolstered. And that's why you're seeing that Heart Steal. Uh, set coming out we're gonna be probably seeing a lot more of those um, kind of more tanky frontliners coming out on the side of our player here uh, just so that they can get that front line tanky enough to let the jinx dps right of course here we're seeing oh we're seeing two uh yeah two uh, bf swords here going to be slapped right onto the jinx eight percent increased ad we love to see it that's a lot more damage uh, onto the Jinx. Now, probably going to opt for either a Rage Blade or... Mm, they... No, 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 no. Eh, maybe. I was going to say, maybe they go for like um, uh, What's it called? A uh, Spear of Sojin. But Spear of Sojin is just cooldowns. So it wouldn't really help much. It's purely due to the fact that the Rocket Launcher isn't that big. You just want DPS. So yeah, probably going to opt for a Rage Blade, maybe a Giant Slayer. Um, but definitely going to opt for something that deals attack speed and damage. Possibly an Infinity Edge. That's the other option. Um, but that will, of course, depend on the crit rate here. As we can see, this match going a, eh, maybe better, maybe worse here. The DPSs do seem to have enough damage to clear out the enemy backline and frontline. Again, they're looking for just having that front line to last long enough for the other front line to fall, right? It's not a question of, yes, I want my front line to deal damage. It's, I want you guys to live just long enough so that I don't die. That's that's basically the summary. Now, Gabriel, in augment selection, what do you think Tommy's going to elect to pick here? Uh, well, as we can see, already rerolls most of them, but here goes for the third option. Um... Probably looking a little bit more for those. Uh, ooh, hold on. Goes for the Yorwick. Oh, okay. Interesting decision. Honestly, I'm not sure what he's going for now. Uh, Punk definitely still being his main uh, goal here. But we're not sure what the real... What? Wait, what? Huh? <laughs> 
I, uh, like, added a question mark above my head right now because I am confused beyond reason. Okay. Punk Guardian. Oh, that's... Yeah, Musha Rapid Fire. Okay. Well, I mean... I'm not gonna question uh, it, it. It's, it does seem working. to be working. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if if it works, don't try to understand it. Wow. Uh, that is a terrifying team composition. Note to self, um, this is how you climb TFT rank. I will say, in terms of health as well, Tommy looking pretty good as he's oh, second yeah, in 76. And uh, you have to assume, as long as Tommy doesn't absolutely throw here, he's probably looking for a pretty decent placement in this match so far. Yeah, most definitely. At, I'd say bare minimum top three. Probably going to make it to top two. And then after that, I mean, top two is such... It's kind of a coin flip, but not really at the same time. His economy is looking gray here. 49, just a little bit off perfect economy. Um, going up against, okay, here we can see a KDA-centric composition here. I, I think that's, yeah, KDA paired with uh, what I think is Disco. Uh, yeah, just, no, actually, that's going to be a pop. Yeah, pop team composition, so KDA pop, uh, but, I mean... Um, the, 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 the pop composition is, well, no longer. Uh, they don't exist anymore, so I guess we don't really need to talk about it anymore. But yeah, this team composition on a base of Punk with Guardian Secondary is actually really, really interesting. Just, because Guardian Ray gives, um, I believe it's defensive buffs, mm. right? So, lots of armor on the side of the front line. Let's that Jinx kind of have also a little teensy weensy bit of armor, uh, but of course not as much. But yeah, that front line again, just lasting so long here. Uh, the opt for the recurve bow, as I was talking about, after the recurve bow comes the needlessly large rod, and once that happens, you have a shredder. That Jinx will be terrifying. Um, but yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see it soon. There's no cap on the attack speed that the rage blade can give you, so. Yeah, that thing, that thing can attack fast, and I don't know if you've ever seen, oh my god, going for a full level here, spending all of the gold just to get to level 8. He's down to 10 economy. And I was about to say, he's looking good on economy with 65, but, I mean, oh my, <laughs> just, just everything <laughs> down the drain, but okay. for good reason. Uh, I will also note that in the combat round before this, he did become victorious over uh, the person who was in first. So that is looking good for Tommy there, uh, as you can assume that he has the better team comp as of right now. It's probably going to end up being the best one so far as this game goes on. Yeah, he's actually got three rapid fires now with the Aphelios. I just saw that Moonlight Visual explode and uh, it kind of gave me a hint as to the fact that he was placed onto the board on that eighth slot. Um, but yeah, definitely something to watch out for. Aphelios, th that being that third rapid fire, but also part of Heart Steel, right? Although he doesn't seem to be opting for a hard steel team composition, of course, hard steel kind of being a weird uh, function in the game because it's kind of more like a um, scaling type of units. Uh, but yeah, moonlight visual definitely useful. We have hyper pop here coming out, uh, so a lot opting for a lot more traits, uh, which will be useful in time. But with these extra traits means that he will have a lot more buffs active at all times. Uh, with the Hyper Pop here uh, on the side, yeah, coming out from a Ziggs. Uh, lots of damage potential with that. But not only that, oh my god, that Jinx is low. Wait, hold on here. That Lux Ultimate takes out the Ziggs. You gotta watch out. Okay, never mind. They don't need to watch out for anything. I mean, wait, hold on. The Jinx did fall. The Jinx did die. We gotta watch out for that, right? I think the biggest threat here might just be Lux Ultimates because Lux deals uh, AOE damage in a straight line, right? And it targets the furthest away uh, on the map, if memory serves. Which means if the furthest away on the map is the Jinx, you gotta watch out um, because that Jinx will fall. It's kind of like an assassin, but not really here. Uh, as we are seeing the Raptors coming out, good thing there is no Elise because Elise would be terrified. Um, but yeah. The C composition is quite interesting, actually, 
just the front line does seem to function very very well does last long enough here they're probably just hoping for a that's the needlessly large rod right there that is beautiful we've got a needlessly large rod we have a uh, recurve bow i think we all know where this is going could it be two rage blades he could okay rage blade number one and then he might choose another needlessly large rod Going for the cloak instead. Ooh, okay. Opting for the cloak for a jack show onto the thresh does give a lot of damage resistance uh, on that jack show. Letting your front line be a lot tankier here. But yeah, um, you're about to see a lot of attack speed on the set of jigs. Like, we're talking a lot of attack speed, all right? I mean, I'm going to let you witness just how fast a jinx can attack. So as you can see here, one stack, two stack, three stack, four stack, she's stacking fast and faster and faster and faster. And okay, yeah, now you can start and see. Okay, yeah, it's attacking fast. It's pretty fast. And yeah, now she's online. <laughs> just the absolute roll in attack speed just builds up and you just see how quickly it just clears as the battle sort of lasts longer and longer. I mean, I would say a beautiful job by Tommy here so far in what has been a very effective early and mid game from him. Yeah, and that Jinx is definitely going to try and carry throughout into the late game. Uh, but as we can see here, Jinx actually being moved to the second slot over, uh, probably going to try and let the Lux ultimates hit the Ziggs instead, right? Kind of letting that collateral damage not Just trying her. to protect that Jinx. Yeah. Well, Jinx is MVP right now. It's literally just um, pr protect the president, except in this case, the president is... J oh my god, Jinx as president. That would be... That would be bad. That would be very, very bad. I I I'm speaking IRL, of course, but... Um, yeah, Jinx here is the MVP. You want to make sure that the Jinx doesn't die. That's why she's placed in the middle of the board here. And as we can see, she is just absolutely shredding through everything she comes into contact with. That Deathblade giving extra AD, that Runon's Hurricane giving her AoE, and that Rage Blade giving her attack speed. She didn't even get to 40 there. I think she's just at 24 stacks. Notable to also say that Tommy has now dethroned and overtaken Ooh. first place. And he's on fire with an eight-round win. He's been on fire for, like, yeah. Like he's, he's been on fire for, like, three rounds in a row now. Uh, th th that's already been on him. He's medium well done now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, nice and roasted. But that is a good thing when it comes to this game. As we can see here, the Yorick uh, is full build, I believe. Yeah, almost full build. I think, yeah. Or, yeah, maybe he is. I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to see. But yeah, Yorick here, really good build, good front line, the Pantheon is full build, the Thresh starting off with the build with the Ajax show, the Jinx being full build, the Amumu actually being placed right in front of the Jinx, kind of to let him target, or uh, select his targets here. The thing that would be the biggest threat right now would be Assassins, but I don't think there are any Assassins in this version of TFT. Um, so Jinx, very, very safe right now. Uh, what we gotta watch out, boy. What we got to watch out for here is probably going to be, yeah, again, those Lux ultimates. Anything that can hit an AoE and nuke a back line. Uh, but, again, there aren't that many of these in the game. So it's really hard to counter this team composition. So they got to watch out for what they pick. Uh, here, I think the biggest threat that they would have to watch out for... Is there even a threat they need to watch out for? I don't think so. I mean, they're they're 76 health. They've been on fire for a while now. I think they're kind of at that point where their team composition is kind of just too strong. And if they just keep on scaling, they're going to be fine. They don't really need to reshape their team comp. And I will say, just the drop-off in health between Tommy and second place is just incredible. He's in such a good position here. Would you say it's a little too early to call? Or would you say that Tommy has definitely secured himself at least a top two finish? Top two finish is guaranteed at this point um, because you're just going to see, yeah, here he's just going to invest all his economy into another character. And wait, ooh, invest into another rapid fire. That Jinx is going to be, oh my god. Oh my god. That is going to be terrifying. A Caitlyn and a Felios and a Jinx and a Twitch. So you've got four rapid fires. Which means the rapid fire is now tier two, or the buff rapid fire is now tier two, which means even more attack speed. Um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of attack speed to go around in these in this team composition, and you're going to see a lot of that damage come out. Uh, you're just, there's no, oh, hold on here. We have the Akali on the back line. They have to watch out for that. Jinx actually switching targets to go and take care of the pesky assassin. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> everything's just gone. It, it's just, yeah. This is what happens when you're that far ahead uh, in TFT. You can kind of just see that moment where you just, just surpass a certain threshold and then yeah, you can't be beaten. Um, so here, I'd say, I'd even... Mm. Would you call first place right now, right here, right now? Mm, I don't Are know. Are you going to cast or curse it? <laughs> uh, I, okay. Personally, I'd say, yeah, this is a first place. No problem. He's like, done it, he's ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if Tommy loses, but this but, will go down as a horrible <laughs> cast or curse oh, no. from Gabriel. <laughs> I've peer pressured him into doing it. <laughs> to be fair, there isn't really a team composition that's even close to what he has right now in terms of just raw DPS. Like, he doesn't even need his front line anymore. He's just, like, he has Yeah, every, every engagement Tommy has taken so far, I mean, it's just looked like an absolute roll. Uh, I mean, it's just... Ridiculous. The, the drop off in health is just laughable at this point. Yeah. I I really can't see it going anywhere down from here. Yeah, I mean, as I was saying earlier on in the game, Jinx, once she gets her items online, it doesn't matter if it's paper, if it's cardboard, if it's a credit card, if it's whatever. It, it can be a front line if you want it to be. Once you put... Anything. Tommy just the loses to the Elder Drake. Is. And Tommy just loses to the Elder Drake right here, right now. And just like... <laughs> all this work for absolutely nothing. That would be... Uh... No, he's going to shred this thing. Yeah, but uh, gonna Tommy, shred Tommy has done just such a good job here in game two. Oh my god, and, where did uh, it go? <laughs> <laughs> it's just evaporated. Wow. Oh my god. And now we're already seeing those new items or those extra items, completed items, coming out here. Trying to see what to pick. Like, he's he's got ample things that he can pick, uh, but knowing what to pick is hard. Going for the Death Blade here, gonna place it onto the Lucian. Um, actually, not a bad idea. I mean, he doesn't really need to buff his backline much more. So just putting that on, it's extra Omnivamp. Plus, it gets sent to the front line, right? So the front line can heal. I mean, not that it really matters at this point, because again, his Jinx is a shredder. Anything that gets within her like range of attack is just spontaneously combusted. So, I mean, oh, hold on here. That front line is lasting for a while here. This fight, we're seeing, oh my god, the Lucian dealing a lot of DPS here. Uh, yeah, okay, and I was saying their front line was lasting long, and they're already at the back line, and the back line's gone. Alrighty. Yep. Definitely a little bit more of a threat this opponent want here, but still not too big of a threat. Um, I mean, we can just see it in, like, pure character size. If you look at what they look like versus all the other ones here, we're talking about top four situation. Probably going to turn into a top three very, very soon uh, after this one round it's just, I mean, it's insane. This Jinx is terrifying. And on top of that, uh, the front line still has pretty good damage, right? Like a Pantheon, granted, it's not made as a DPS class, but it still deals a good amount of damage. We're seeing the exact same thing. The Thresh, really, really, really high defenses. It's hard to, like, go through those. Um, the Yorick also being a really big problem with those ghouls coming around just being an absolute pest. The Lucian just spraying everywhere from the back lines here. Hold on, we only have two DPSs left here. An assassin on the back line, Mega Ghoul coming out. The back line is gone. Wait, hold on. The Jinx is gone. Wait, no, 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 no. not like this. Not like this. The caster curse. Wait, Will it on. happen? It's Yorick, it's Yorick, it's Yorick. He carries, he carries, it's, he carries. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Woo. <laughs> okay, not even close, baby. Not even close. All right, I told you, Yorick carries. 
Um, uh, I think uh, regardless of even if even if Tommy did lose that round, it still wouldn't really do too too much to him. I would say, no, it wouldn't. especially with the economy he has as well, he would most likely find a way out of it. So, again, just this has just been an absolute rolling. Yeah, it's been a roll right now. The Jinx is going to switch sides here. Uh, just kind of putting the Amumu aside. Oh, God. How many rounds in a row has Tommy won? 13. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see that right next to the economy. Oh, yeah. God. Yep. That j That is 13 rounds since the Jinx went online. That's, yep. that's how you know when the Jinx went online. Um, but yeah, as we can see here, absolutely going to sweep his opponent. Uh, going to eliminate the opponent here. Going to be a top two situation now, uh, I believe. Yeah, once this match ends, it's going to be a top two situation. Because, yeah, that's too much damage that's going to come out. Uh, but holy smokes, that Olaf is tanky. Wow. All right. Uh, so it's going to be... Um, yeah. This is going to be an interesting one. Two health versus 76. Hmm, I don't know. Seems like a W, but you never know. Uh, here, opting on the carousel for a heart steal. I don't know what character that is. Uh, he doesn't even care what character it is. He's going to sell it. Uh, but yeah, opting for the heart steal. Going to go for the extra levels. Just going to, I guess, pick up another champion? Does seem so. Yeah, gonna pick up the Sona for the extra heals, I guess. Um, Sona, not a character you see a lot, but... Oh, hold on here. Does end up getting the pick. Uh, picks the middle path for the Sona. Interesting. And then going to swap the Sona with the Jinx. Uh, last second, just to make sure they don't know where that um, high-value target is going to be. And, yeah, as we can see here, might be a Tier 1 Sona, but don't worry, this is a Tier 5 unit. Uh, going to do a lot of healing, I believe, is what she does in this version. Hold on. But, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, this yeah, isn't... I don't think this is... Twitch? Twitch? Twitch carry? No. No. Uh-oh. See, if... If Jinx was where Twitch was, she would have been fine. That would have been a W. But because Target Prior went to Jinx first, and Jinx is, you know, the kind of president in this scenario, um, it became a problem. And now he doesn't have the economy to, I'll say, quote unquote, come back from this. So he has to make sure that he swaps his, yeah, so as we can see here, he's checking where the Jinx is, swaps the Jinx of play um, a little bit just to make sure that they know or they don't know where she is and they can't adapt their characters to it. But here we're going to have to hope that the Jinx stays alive for long enough. Karthus ult coming out, going to deal a good burst of damage here. We can see, yeah, that Jinx is scaling, that Jinx is scaling. The damage is coming out, the attack speed yeah. is coming out. And yeah, she's just trying to shred now. Holy, that that Olaf was not dying here. Uh, oh, hold on here. We I might... think it's going to happen again. Oh God, no. No, not like this. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> if this, if Gabriel is just cast or cursed Tommy here, this is going to be hilarious. It was looking so good, but the second player just will not go down. It's that Olaf, man. That Olaf stays alive for too long. I think they, they're they running a pentakill composition right now. Um, but yeah, going to take that neutral uh, Drake here for that eco round. Uh, yeah, the Drake doesn't stand a chance. Absolutely curb stomped. Uh, the NPC there. Um, but yeah, I don't know what they're going to have to go for here. I think uh, they're down to 50 health. This is a problem. But here, are they... Okay, they're going to go up for the Warmong armor. Frontline is stronger. More time for the Jinx to scale. Let that cook. Makes sense. That's the plan here. Or it seems to be the plan. Tier 2 Lucian coming out too. Really, really important to keep in mind here. The Jinx going to get swapped out of places. Again, keep them guessing. Keep them wondering. Where is that Jinx going to be? Um, but here, as we can see, what did they... What is going to be the result of this fight... Karthus Salt again, coming out, a big burst of damage. Lucian Ultimate, coming out, big burst of damage again. Wow, okay. Oh, I... yeah, the Jinx is coming online here. 
Shredder, Shredder. This, Shredder. I think this is going to be it. Ooh! And there it is. I didn't cast a curse it. Let's go. <laughs> as soon as that Jinx came online, Tommy was sitting pretty in first. And that is going to be the result of that game in TFT. Wow. That was... I was scared I cast a curse for that. I'm not going to lie. I was. <laughs> you had me going for a minute there. But, yeah. I mean, once he got that front line, uh, once he got the War Monk's armor on the, I believe it was the Thresh you placed it on. Um, yeah. Once that happened, he was up. The Jinx had enough time to cook. And, I mean, Rage Blade on a DPS. Yeah, we've all seen this one before. It's game over. Um, yeah. That health, though. Definitely allowed him to bite his time and uh, actually get to that last carousel, right? Because if he didn't get to that last carousel, we might have had a different story. Uh, but yeah, he was just such in a dominant lead during that early game that he ended up just, I mean, he ended up just having the time to stall, right? Uh, but yeah, from that standpoint, he just did really well. Any other uh, any other points? Yes, let's just kind of have a recap of what happened tonight. Saints on Rainbow Six Siege going 2-0 and o on maps. Yep. First game winning 7-5 to five on Clubhouse. Second game dominantly showing a 7-1 performance yeah, on great. Skyscraper with the first five rounds as well going from the defensive side. Going on to Omega Strikers, we did end up pulling out the win as well for that. Oh, yep. TFT, Tommy finishing in second and, and first. first. You very, can't really do much better than that other than dope. two wins in a row. And on the side of Fortnite, just so happened to not really be their day. Usually better placements from Mateo and Unknown, but or Teo and Unknown, but it just didn't happen. It just wasn't in the cards. Finishing 14th and then 29th. I don't remember the if there was another game or if we just didn't get to it. To be fair, though, we didn't see how many kills they had because maybe they were just fighting the whole time and they came out at that point, but still had a lot of. Well, points. it just so it, it seems like the lobbies. It, it seemed like the lobbies they were in were just so aggressive, yeah. but. That is going to do it for tonight. I want to thank our sponsors as HyperX, Tim Horton, Subway, SRC, and SEC alumni. I would like to thank you, Gabriel, for joining me in the cast. Like Always a pleasure as well. Thank you for covering on TFT. Yeah. It just seems like a game that you can do so well. Uh, thank you to everybody in the back room. We cannot do the work that we put in we without you, you. So thank you, Dan, Aiden, and TJ for a first time directing. You put on a great show. Uh, do we have anything for tomorrow that you know of, Gabriel? Uh, that is a good question. I know I am on tomorrow. I do believe you have a Valorant game going on tomorrow. I think. Well, regardless, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not regardless, gonna for it. we will be starting at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. So we will see you there. Thank you, Saints Nation. Thank you, Gabriel. It's been me, Patrick Smoke Chambers, and Gabriel, aka Blockbeat. And we will see you later. GG.